structural integrity. They will then route cables to provide Ethernet capabilities for two high-definition cameras on the station's port truss or backbone. Also inside the Quest airlock at the moment, you see NASA astronaut Kate Rubens. There are seven people currently living aboard the International Space Station. That's Michael Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and Kate Rubens of NASA, Soichi Noguchi of JAXA, and Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kudsverchkov of Roscosmos. Airlock Houston on one for big picture words. So, Eric, we are looking to swap out this ComCap, um, but we w are hoping to be able to do it in um, 10 minutes to avoid uh, depressing, having to depress the airlock again. Uh, we definitely don't want to rush through it or make mistakes, but uh, that will be the goal. And with you guys having already have completed it, we know you're experts. That's 10 minutes from the time that we uh, pop the glove on the suit uh, to opening the helmet, remove the old, or remove the, um, can we take HECA off before that 10 minutes starts? Uh, can you give us the, the very specific start and end step? So, uh, Kate, in step 9.2 of that uh, break in pre breathe procedure, 2.107, there's a warning uh, that they'll give you more words. It's step nine decimal three through step 13 that must be performed in 10 minutes. Three, two, yeah, one, and we'll assess the rest. The team. Copy Kate and uh, you copy end exercise. As you hear, teams on the ground are communicating with the crew in the Quest airlock, discussing the communications cap that Mike Hopkins is wearing. There are multiple spares on board, and he is having trouble hearing in his comm cap, and so they will be swapping out that cap as we continue preparations for today's spacewalk. Floating into frame is JAXA, Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Soichi Noguchi, helping the crew members prepare for today. Copy Wadi, and uh, we copy, we see in step seven uh, that we will be taking care of the HD EMU camera before the critical time, so that sounds good. And we're looking at nine decimal two or nine decimal three through thirteen to be accomplished in ten minutes. And let's uh, discuss up here, and we'll get back to you. Good words, Kate. Thanks. As you heard, Rubens mentioned they'll have a 10-minute time frame to complete the work of removing and replacing the communications cap. Meanwhile, the astronauts are currently in the pre-breathe portion of today's preparations. Pre-breathing consists of two phases. In the first, the crew breathes 100% oxygen through a mask to begin purging the nitrogen from their bodies. And in the second phase, which is where we see the crew members now, they are in their spacesuits and conducting something called the in-suit light exercise, or aisle, where they move their arms and legs and raise their metabolic rate just ever so slightly to help speed up getting rid of any excess nitrogen. Airlock 
Mark Houston on one for uh, word for steps when you're ready to copy. We are ready to copy. All right, so we will be in the same procedure that we were in earlier today, 2.107, break in EMU in suit prebreeze. We'll do steps six through 10.4. And then in 10.4, you will switch COM mode to OFF, OFF, swap the COM caps, then switch the COM mode back to PRY. Then we'll have you do steps 10.6 through 17.2, and then finish with 17.4 through the end of the procedure. How copy? Uh, starting step six through 10.4, then com mode off, swap com cap, com mode back to pry. I guess you want to do the com check. We're in a brief satellite handover, and you've got a live look inside Mission Control Houston, the Orbit 2 team currently on console. Leading today's team is Chris Edelin, the flight director, and uh, Capcom for the astronauts inside the International Space Station is Kathy Bolt. However, relaying the tasks to the astronauts once outside the space station is Andy Mogensen, an ESA, European Space Agency astronaut. After switching the uh, COM mode to PRY, and we actually will have you do the COM check after the 10 minutes, so we won't eat into that. Okay, I understand. So we will not do the COM check after COM PRY. So we go to the 10.6 through 17.2, then 17.4 through the end. Good read back, Soichi. End, and you, three, two, one, end exercise. Wani, the only thing that I'm going to add to that that we noticed the last time is when we're switching the com caps, we're going to put three twists um, in the com cap. We cut that for Ike's, um, but that's important because that's out of our usual. And Copy, I copy Kate. Good that catch. the procedure that you read to me, then steps 9.3 through 13 are the critical ones where the 10-minute timer applies. Those are good words, Kate. Three, two, one, start exercise. As you heard, the call to start exercise, we were discussing that is the in-suit light exercise protocol. And it's a loose term for exercise. It's really just moving the legs on the spacesuit, help purge that nitrogen out of the astronauts' bodies. And crew members uh, Suichi Noguchi and Kate Rubens are preparing to swap out the COM cap for NASA astronaut Michael Hopkins. He is EV2 today, having some trouble transmitting through his COM cap currently. Airlock Houston on one, no response required, uh, but both crew will be hot mic'd uh, until further notice. Copy your thumbs up. Air 
Doc Houston on one. Just one clarification. We are on the ninth cycle out of ten for exercise, and then once we're complete with the exercises, when we'll start into those steps in uh, two decimal one zero seven. That totally makes Copy sense. Something. So we wait until exercise complete. Copy. Today's spacewalk is the fifth of the year and the third for Hawkins and Glover working together. Earlier this year, the astronauts have continued station upgrades as well as preparing the International Space Station for new solar arrays. The solar arrays will launch later this year, and the agency is using this technology on both the updated power system for the station, as well as the power and propulsion element for NASA's Gateway Lunar Outpost. Three, two, one, end exercise. Three, two, one, start exercise. This will be the last one. Go faster. I heard you that time. Really? Yeah. It was still weekend. It was choppy, but. <laughs> NASA astronauts Victor Glover and Michael Hopkins continue the pre-breathe portion of their EVA preparations today. All four astronauts you see in the screen right now are currently in the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock where the crew dons their suits, conducts this pre-breathe and will attach the SAFER or the simplified aid for EVA rescue, sort of like a jetpack backpack. Once all of those steps are complete, the crew will move into the crew lock portion, the outermost part of the Quest airlock, where final communications and suit systems checks will be conducted with the ground. The spacewalk itself will officially begin when suits are changed to internal battery power.
The in-suit light exercise or aisle pre-breathe protocol is now complete. End exercise. And our in-suit light exercise is now complete. You are go to start into 2.107 to swap the CompTAP. Two decimal one zero seven starting step six. Good words. NASA astronaut Kate Rubens and Japanese Aerospace Exploration, C Exploration Agency astronaut Soichi Noguchi preparing to assist NASA's Mike Hopkins in doffing and donning a new comm cap so he can communicate with his crew members in the ground. Time is 11 Copy 11.21. Kate Rubens and Suichi Noguchi making a quick switch of that comm cap. You see Mike Hawkins now donning. That will be underneath his helmet and allows him to hear and communicate with teams on the ground as well as his comrade Victor Glover.
Airlock Houston on one, go ahead and move the combo to Pry. Test one, two, three, four, five. Have you loud and clear. I've got you loud and clear. And we have you loud and clear, Hopper, as well. Welcome back. And with that quick switch comes a great comm check from Mike Hopkins. Rubens and Noguchi now replacing his helmet. We done. Talk, talk. You hear me? Yes. As we prepare for today's spacewalk, the International Space Station is flying about 17,500 miles an hour, 260 statute miles over the Philippine Sea. As the astronauts continue walking through their procedures, preparing to exit the Quest airlock this morning, another look at what they will be working on today. First, both astronauts will go to the early ammonia system and vent two jumpers. Glover will relocate one of those to near the airlock. Uh, a break uh, time was uh, 11. Uh, 27, which means only six minutes break, and I started the 12 minute first time on. Copy all, Soichi. Excellent work. Soichi Noguchi reporting only six minutes for the time that it took to remove and replace Mike Hopkins' calm cap. The crew was given a 10-minute time frame in which to accomplish the task.
We are in a quick satellite handover of the satellites on the tracking data and relay satellite system. These handovers of audio and video are tracked and we expect to regain communications with the crew shortly. Back inside the Quest airlock and back to our look ahead at what will take place today outside the station. Victor Glover will also remove and replace a wireless video system external transceiver assembly known as WADA. There are three WETAs that receive video from wireless video systems. This one failed in December 2020, so he will remove the current unit and replace with a brand new one. Michael Hopkins will be completing a multitude of tasks at the Columbus module, one being working with the jumpers and plugs on the Bartolomeo Science platform. During EVA 69, US EVA 69, astronauts reported the jack socket tines might be more closed in than was expected, so he will be troubleshooting some of the work there today. While at the Columbus module, Hopkins will also reconfigure a ham radio, and he'll continue work on the Bartolomeo Science platform by fully closing 11 cable clamps that were originally used to hold down the cables during launch. Back at the airlock, both astronauts will work together on installing a stiffener for the airlock's thermal cover. This will help keep the thermal cover from blowing open. He continues work from a previous spacewalk this year where a magnetic plate was installed, adding a tether point. The astronauts will then move on to routing some cables, which will eventually create a Wi-Fi hotspot when connected. All in all, we're looking at about six and a half hours of work today outside the hatch for our two astronauts, Michael Hopkins and Victor Glover. And Houston Station 1, that's step 17-6, I, I turned on the EMU TV just in case you want to check out. Yeah, we copy, Suichi. I'm sorry, the Yiga. Oh, sorry, Heka. Uh, Heka. Heka is uh, on, so it's a green LED on. <laughs> All right. Copy, HECA on. And Suichi, you can uh, go ahead and turn that off. So just push button OFS. I'll turn the green LED OFS. Copy on. And uh, yeah, what is now? It's only seven minutes into the purge. I believe we have to go through 12 minutes for the purge, right? That's affirmative, Suichi.
You heard the astronaut discussing the HECA on Mike Hawkins' helmet. That's the High Definition Extravehicular Activity Camera Assembly. So Hawkins will be wearing a high definition camera this morning. Hopefully we get some great views from that camera and the ground team is looking for clearer views coming from the camera of the Bartolomeo science platform. <laughs> I'll pass that along. And tell Chris that the case and I passed the uh, backroom in your book certified. <laughs> We'll go, we'll go, Suji. Dr. Shockham. Station on one for the evening, please. Go ahead on one. Well, yeah, we still have like three minutes before the baking complete, so we'll continue through the end. And then after that, we go back to the EMU brewery uh, with the Maddox uh, changeout, I guess. That's affirmative, Suichi. You have a, a go in step 15 to proceed with the Medox replacement. That'll be after this procedure complete, go back to step 15. Good words. Another video handover with the International Space Station. Crew discussing pre-breathe. This is to purge the nitrogen from the astronauts' bodies and maintain a 100% oxygen environment. Station one for Wadi, just checking out the old comm cap here. I do not see any evidence of moisture in the embeds, and I'll give you a close-up zoom of the ear cups and the mic booms. This is the uh, failed comm cap that we took out of Hopper suit. Copy all, Kate. And can we get the serial number from you as well? Twelve ninety seven, yep. Copy twelve ninety seven and we see it in the video. Excellent. Thanks, Kate. And can we see the mic booms as well? Yeah, perfect. A close-up look of the communications cap that Mike Hopkins was previously wearing and having trouble communicating through. Copy. We see it. Thanks, Kate. And Kate, did you see any damage to the pins in that pigtail? No, but after we guys get these guys out the door, I'll get the macro camera and get some uh, close-in documentation for you. I don't see any obvious damage. Much in. appreciated. Thanks, Kate.
And Houston Station, uh, step 18 is complete. Uh, 11 4. Copy, purge complete. Noguchi reporting that that purge of nitrogen from the spacesuit is complete. The spacesuits are kept at a lower pressure to help uh, allow for more flexibility. The gloves inside the spacesuit are extremely rigid and uh, with a six and a half hour spacewalk and using hands the entire time helps to have a little bit more flexibility. So inside the spacesuit, the pressure is about 4.3 PSI. And to mimic that on Earth, you'd need to be at about 30,000 feet elevation. The average atmospheric pressure we're used to on Earth at sea level is about 14.7 PSI. So that's similar to the pressure of the inside of the International Space Station with a mixed oxygen and nitrogen environment. Again, just like we are used to here on Earth. Moscow Station Space to Ground 2. Go ahead on uh, Space to Ground 2. I did perform an, an inspection of the unit and um, I have no questions. And uh... if you are in the Houston area and watching this morning's spacewalk, in less than 10 minutes, you can go outside and see the International Space Station fly overhead. It'll be about a six minute pass. 0 0.1, and I believe that's the end of this procedure. Go back to step 15 um, to the alarm risk mode 225. Copy all, Sushi. Those are good words and a good leak check. And uh, just a reminder that the intent is to uh, keep both crew members in hot mic for now. Uh, but if you need private comm at any point, just let us know. Houston Station on one, uh, double check, uh, we are allowed to start the uh, medical change out at this time. Medical replacement crude. That's a firm, Suchi, you are go.
Soe Chinaguchi and Kate Hopkins working to remove Victor Glover from his place in the crew lock portion of, or the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock and will eventually move him into the crew lock portion, the outermost part of the airlock. Working through another satellite handover, but in the meantime, here's another look at the team working today's spacewalk in the flight control room here at Mission Control Houston. Here's your team for today. Victor Glover and Mike Hopkins are spacewalkers. Suichi Noguchi and Kate Rubens working inside the equipment lock portion to prepare the crew for the day. Your flight director leading all the teams on the ground who are monitoring the station systems, Chris Edelin and Andy Mogensen, the ground IV who will be relaying tasks to the astronauts once they begin the spacewalk. At the very top of your screen is Capcom, Kathy Bolt. She is communicating with the astronauts while in the station, as well as with the astronauts who remain in the station during today's spacewalk. And Kate, we copy number 10, and we saw 9 earlier for Ike. You just got a look at the crew members replacing the oxygen in the suits, preparing our spacewalkers today for a planned six and a half hour excursion. We copy 1151. The International Space Station now flying over Houston, home of Mission Control Houston at NASA's Johnson Space Center.
If you'd like to know when the International Space Station is flying over your area, you can go outside and see it yourself. You can go to spotthestation.nasa.gov, put in your location, and sign up for alerts. Airlock Houston on one for Kate or Suichi. Can you confirm the Medox number, serial numbers for what you put into Eichenhofer? That was 1031 for Ice EV1 and 1032 for Hopper EV2. We copy those are good numbers and we have taken you out of box um, for now. Good copy. As the astronauts continue preparations to head outside the hatch for today's spacewalk, we are taking your questions. If you're on Twitter, use the hashtag AskNASA and let us know what you want to answer. We will try our best to get that done. This one asking, will these activities on Mike Hawkins EMU impact the start time? An EMU is an extravehicular mobility unit, also known as a spacesuit. Uh, these activities of replacing the communications cap that we saw earlier do impact the start time. We wanted to make sure Hopkins had proper communication with his crew member, Victor Glover, as well as with the ground. And earlier today, we saw Victor Glover having to have his communications cap replaced for audio issues. So the astronauts were originally scheduled to head out of the hatch at 7.30 a.m. Eastern time, but we will see that happen a little bit behind schedule this morning. Copy, 1154. An airlock on one, just for your awareness, the new no earlier than go for depress is 1241, 1241. 1241, thank you. Capcom Kathy Bolt relaying to the crew that depressurization can begin as early as 45 minutes from now. That's 641 Central Time, 1241 Greenwich Mean Time, GMT. That's the time that the astronauts use aboard the International Space Station.
101 uh, versus past the uh, manual leak check. We'll now go back to step 16 of uh, EMU preview. We copy and concur. A couple more Ask NASA questions coming in as our astronauts prepare for their space spacewalk today. You can see NASA's Victor Glover. He's our EV-1, or extra extravehicular crew member one. They are preparing to don the SAFER, or the Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue. The SAFER is essentially like a jetpack backpack, only for use if a crew member were to become detached from the International Space Station. However, that's a very unlikely event as they remain tethered at all times. Back to those Ask NASA questions, this one from Melissa. You can see that red tube at the bottom of your screen. She wants to know what exactly that red tube is there for. The red tube provides air circulation to the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock where you see our crew members currently. And another question, this one from Joseph, asking how the microphones are attached to the wall. Is it a Velcro or a magnet? You've probably seen Kate Rubens and Suichi Noguchi taking the microphones off of the wall to speak with the crews on the ground and within the suits this morning. Those are attached with a Velcro, a hook and loop closed uh, piece of fabric. You'll also notice that sometimes on astronauts' pants and other clothing items, that way they can properly attach things and, and keep them from floating away, as you see the tablet currently on Kate Rubens.
Kate Rubens and Suichi Noguchi now moving Victor Glover toward the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, the outermost portion. You see those red stripes on the legs of his spacesuit. That will help you identify him once he's outside of the hatch today. He is EV-1 or extravehicular crew member 1. Meanwhile, Mike Hopkins, who is still attached inside the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock, has an unmarked suit and he will be EV-2. NASA astronaut Victor Glover now in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock and preparations being made for Mike Hopkins to join him there as well. In the meantime, just a look back at what we expect to see the crew members work on today during the spacewalk. They will be venting the early ammonia system jumper cables and one will be re relocated near the Quest airlock itself. Mike Hopkins will connect cables for the Columbus Bartolomeo payload, as well as clamp down 11 clamps to secure some wires there. He'll also work on the ham radio in the nearby area. Additionally, the astronauts will replace a wireless antenna assembly on the Unity module and then work together to install the stiffener on the airlock's thermal cover. This will keep the thermal cover from blowing open. Their last task of the day is currently scheduled to be routing some cables, which will provide Ethernet, Ethernet capabilities for two of the high-definition cameras on the station's port truss.
Kate Rubens and Soichi Noguchi attaching the safer simplified aid for EVA rescue to Mike Hopkins, and we are answering a few more of your Ask NASA questions. This one from Jeremy asking, can the astronauts control the temperature in their spacesuit during the spacewalk? The answer is yes. Whether the astronauts are in the sunshine outside the station or in the darkness, uh, they can experience up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 250 degrees. However, their spacesuits keep them cool by being white, a reflective color, as well as they are wearing a cooling and thermal garment underneath that allows them to keep cool during the spacewalk. Next question comes from Ruben, five years old. Thanks for watching, and we love your question. How do the astronauts have a drink while on the spacewalk? Of course, you can expect the astronauts might get thirsty in six and a half hours or more of tedious work while outside the space station. The astronauts do have a drink pouch inside their suits, and near their mouth is a bite valve. Whenever the crew members, crew members bite down on the valve, they are able to drink water, and when they release, that valve is closed. And a question from Denny about the SAFER, the Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue. I mentioned it's sort of like a jet pack. It uses, uh, he asked what fuel it uses, and it's a compressed nitrogen-powered backpack. As we said, this is primarily intended in case a spacewalker became detached from the station and needed to maneuver back. However, the astronauts are always tethered to the space station, so we never expect for uh, this situation. Both Victor Glover and Mike Hopkins now inside the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock.
After everything is situated inside the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, the hatch between the crew lock and the equipment lock will be closed. The astronauts will conduct some final communications and suit systems checks with the ground. Depressurization will begin and the spacewalk itself will officially begin once the suits are switched to internal battery power. Both astronauts now in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, and we've got a few more Ask NASA questions. This one from Brianna. Thank you for watching, and she wants to know how long the astronauts can be outside the space station. We plan for about six and a half hours of work for our crew members in today's spacewalk. However, that can be modified to be longer or shorter based on the consumables that they are using. That includes their oxygen in their spacesuits. Nathan wants to know the website that gives notifications when the space station is flying over your local area. You can visit spotthestation.nasa.gov, type in your location, and sign up for email or text message alerts when you'll be able to see the International Space Station. As you can see, those spacesuits are pretty large, and this next question, wanting to know what is the rough mass of that equipment. On Earth, the spacesuits themselves weigh about 315 pounds, but of course that number is reduced to nearly nothing when in microgravity.
NASA astronaut Kate Rubens now closing the hatch between the crew and equipment log portions of the Quest airlock. She and Suichi Noguchi will remain on the equipment lock side where the astronauts donned their suits this morning. Meanwhile, Hawkins and Glover are now inside the crew lock portion, fully suited and ready for today's spacewalk. Station system one, uh, we're checking step 73, you guys can do the uh, step uh, 74. We copy, we'll put that in work. Station 2, I believe you guys also perform 75, 76. We are standing by for 77. We copy. We've got 75 in work, and we're going to wait just a few more minutes for 76. We are still 12 minutes to our go for depressed time. Things moving smoothly for the astronauts now as they prepare to exit the International Space Station. However, we still have less than 12 minutes until depressurization of the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock begins. We'll be bringing that down from the pressure about 14.7 PSI, and that's what we're used to here on Earth. That's typically what the space station is near. Happy to help. I'll be bringing down that pressure inside the crew lock portion toward near a vacuum like the astronauts will experience in space.
Good. Okay. Just settle back in here. Stop moving around. And airlock Houston on one. EV crew are now hot mic on space to ground one. And so we see you are go for step 77. EV one copy. Great to hear from you, Kathy. EV two copy. And EV one copy. Step 77 is complete. Copy all. You guys have fun out there and be safe. Looking forward to a good day. We're in a quick satellite handover of the tracking and data relay satellite systems. That was Capcom Kathy Bolt talking with the crew. She will be handing over her duties of speaking with the spacewalkers to Andy Mogensen, a European Space Agency astronaut you see there in the center of your screen. He will be relaying all of the tasks to the crew while they're outside the hatch. Meanwhile, Kathy Bolt will stay on console and be speaking with the crew members inside the International Space Station. While we wait for depressurization of the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock to begin, we are still taking your Ask NASA questions. Dan wants to know where the crew members are from and if there are language barriers on the space station. It truly is an international space station, and in your screen here you see JAXA, or Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Soichi Noguchi. Four of the crew members are from NASA and are American. And two of the crew members are from Russia of the space agency Roscosmos. Crew members learn to speak English and Russian. That way they can all communicate with one another aboard the International Space Station. Then Kat wants to know well, thanks for the live feed. We are happy to provide it. Uh, once Michael and Victor are outside of the space station, is there any visual identification of them? Yes, you will be able to tell them apart once outside the space station. If you're looking for NASA astronaut Victor Glover, you can look for red stripes around the legs of his spacesuit. That identifies him as EV-1 or extravehicular crew member one. Meanwhile, if you see an astronaut with no stripes or an unmarked suit, I should say, that's NASA's Mike Hopkins EV-2. Teams on the ground conducting their go, no go poll for depressurization today and everything is looking good. 
This next question is from Nathan, age six. Hi, Nathan, and thanks for your question. He would like to know how fast the space station travels and how many minutes it takes to go around the Earth. The space station travels at about 17,500 miles per hour, and it sees 16 sunrises and sunsets a day. So it takes about 90 minutes for the space station to go around the Earth, and every 45 minutes they see either a sunrise or a sunset. Our next Ask NASA question is, what is the standard time zone in space? Well, we are in Houston and in central time, and those in Roscosmos are about 12 hours ahead of us, so the time zone that the space station uses is a GMT, or Greenwich Mean Time. That's about halfway between both of the command and control centers. Just a couple of minutes until we'll be looking for that go for depress call. And this next question from Arya wanting to know how old the space station is. The first element of the International Space Station was Zarya, a Russian element. Zarya launched on November 20th, 1998. And just last November, we celebrated 20 years of continuous human presence on the International Space Station meaning that for 20 years since last November, there has been a human in space at all times. Another question. This one from Ashwin wanting to know if the replacement items are hooked up to the suit during the spacewalk so they don't fly free. That is co correct. You'll probably hear a lot of talk about tethers today once the astronauts are outside of the station. Of course, the crew members themselves remain tethered to the station at all times, but they also keep their workstations and any tools or replacement items they need tethered to themselves. Airlock Houston on one, we are ready for depress. You can pick up in step 80, crew lock, depress, repress, cue card. Some copies. Uh, sorry. Station copies. Sounds good. And so uh, EV1, EV2, are you ready for the card? EV1 ready. Tom is a little bit broken. And three's ready. All right. EB2, UIA, switch depress pump power to on. Wait 10 seconds for complete startup. Depress pump power on. All right. 
uh, EB2, Deepers Pump, Mario Iso, open. Expect a lot down. Open. Deepers Pump, Man Iso. Behind EB2, Monitor, Suit, Big H, less than 5.5. .5. If it's greater than 5.5, stop Deepers. EB1, 2. Stop Deepers. Depressurization has begun in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. This is a very slow process, bringing that pressure in the in the crew lock portion down to as near zero as possible, equating it to almost a vacuum, which is what the astronauts will experience once they are outside of the hatch. Crew lock pressure now under 10 PSI. Depressurization will continue until a pause at 5 PSI. And EV2, the next step will be when the crew lock got 6.0, you hit a left out, and a 5.0 PSI, you close the manual ISO down. EV2.
Depressurization continues in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, and in your frame right now you see Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Soichi Noguchi peeking in on the crew members as he monitors depressurization. We have another Ask NASA question, this one from Pippa. Hi Pippa. She wants to know the temperature on the space station. Inside the station, the temperature stays at about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Copy 6.0. Next, uh, when 5.0 PSI, you close the manual. You too. Move my feet, Nader Hopper. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, Venus. Okay. Four no, deep pump, man, I closed. Hey, EB2. Next, EB1, EB2. 
DCM, switch display to status until lift check question mark display. Hold yes for two seconds to follow display the instructions. Give me one. Two. Preparation for today's spacewalks continue. The crew lock portion of the Quest airlock is currently being depressurized, bringing it down to near vacuum, just like space. Once they egress or exit the hatch today, the crew members have a variety of tasks ahead of them. Both will work on the early ammonia system to vent some jumpers, two specifically, and one will be moved to the near the airlock, outside of the airlock. A wireless video system external transceiver assembly will be removed and replaced by Victor Glover. Meanwhile, Mike Hopkins will be working on several tasks at the Columbus module, including at the Bartolomeo platform where he will be working to connect cables from a previous spacewalk this year. And the emergency MPO is now open. EB1, EB2, monitor should be gauge less than 5.5. EB1, 2. And EB2, your next action is when the cool lock is at 2.0 psi, uh, you will close the manual ISO valve and the pump power to OFF. EB2. This handheld camera view coming from Soichi Noguchi inside the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock, monitoring depressurization of the crew lock, where Michael Hopkins and Victor Glover are now preparing for today's spacewalk, depressurization continuing smoothly. We're in a quick satellite handover as depressurization continues.
2.0, deep breath pump man ISO valve is closed. Copy, and you can send uh, pump power to all FS. Deep breath pump power is off, all FS. Okay, I see it off. It's been a pleasure working, uh, serving you. And now the Space Ambassador of Denmark is going to take over. Andy. <laughs> Thanks, Luigi. Thanks, Luigi. And Kate. And Kate, yep. Good afternoon, Ike and Hopper. I'm ready for an initial tether config if you are. All right, Andy. It's great to hear your voice. All right. So, EV1. Starting at the airlock steering extender, has a waist tethered small hook, which is closed, locked, black on black, good full test. And then my waist tether is connected to that. Large hook to large hook, good full test, both are locked, black on black. My waist tether small hook is to my right D ray extender lock, gate closed, black on black. And my safety tether anchor load alleviating strap hook, the red hook is locked, black on black to the right D ray extender. That reel, the red reel, is unlocked. That reel has a green hook locked to it. The yellow hook from that reel is locked to my green reel. It's closed, sliders locked, black on black, good full test. And that anchor is locked, black on black, to Hopper's red reel. And that reel is unlocked. Copy all for you, Ike. That sounds good. Okay, I'm going to start for EV2 with uh, my right DNA extender for my waist tether. It is, uh, all hook is on that. So close, so the lock, lock on block, good full test. And the hook is to my T bar. Also on the right DNA extender is my red small hook. Go close, go lock, lock on black. Good pull test. And the yellow hook from my red reel, which is unlocked, is attached to the green reel. Go close, go lock, lock on black. Good pull test. Green reel is unhooked or unlocked. The small green hook is attached to my red reel, and that is unlocked, and my anchor hook is to my T-bar. Also attached to my red reel, as uh, EV-1 already reported, is his anchor hook, bail closed, out of lock, lock on black, with a good pull test. Excellent. That's a good config for both of you. Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover reporting their tether configurations ahead of today's spacewalk. In this view you can see through the window of the hatch that separates the crew lock and equipment lock portions. Just a heads up, you can expect an alert tone when the crew lock DPDT is about zero on the DCM. And we have about 10 minutes until we're at vacuum. You want two.
depressurization of the crew lock slowly continues, bringing that down to a vacuum before the astronauts open the hatch and egress or exit into space. The spacewalk will officially begin when Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover, our spacewalking astronauts today, switch their suits to internal battery power. As we await depressurization's completion, another look at what we can expect to see the astronauts work on today. We mentioned that early ammonia system, they'll be venting two of the jumpers there, and one will be relocated to the outside of the airlock. Victor Glover will remove and replace a wireless video system external transceiver assembly. Meanwhile, Mike Hopkins will be working several tasks at the Columbus module, including working on some jumpers and plugs for the Bartolomeo platform outside Columbus. Additionally, he will be reconfiguring a ham radio and closing 11 cable clamps used on Bartolomeo. Copy 0 0.6, so when it reaches uh, less than 0 0.5, then you can open and stow the EV hatch. And if you see that before I do, which is likely going to be the case, let me know and I'll get started. Copy, will do. Andy Mogensen, today's ground IV, reporting to the crew that they are almost ready to open the hatch. But back to the tasks we can expect to see. We'll also see the crew members install a stiffener on the thermal airlock cover. This will help keep the cover from blowing open. And their last scheduled task is to route cables to camera ports 8 and 9. These will create a Wi-Fi hotspot once connected.
Dyke, we see a uh, delta P of less than 0 0.5 psi. You are go to open and stow the EV hatch. Copy, in work, and I see 0 decimal 5 on the gauge, just for your info. Wow. All right, Hopper. Yep, I scrunch down your way a little bit. See that? Unlocked. That's just unlocked. Down, Ike. Hey, that little forearm trick worked. Yeah, what do you know? All right, well, Ike, Andy, <coughs> the hatch is open. Copy. And Sweetie in the airlock, you are go to close the emergency MPEV. Anything for you, Andy? The uh, MPEV is closed. Copy. Now, uh, Ike and Hopper, on your DCM, you can switch power to bat. Please stagger your switch throws and expect a warning tone, and then check your display switch is functional. One, power to bat. We're on another satellite handover of the tracking data and relay satellite systems, but just before you saw NASA astronauts Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover open the thermal cover of the hatch. That's the exact thermal cover they'll be working on later today. Switch power to EV1 and 2 to off and check that the four power LEDs are also off. Power EV1 off. Power EV2 off. LEDs are off. Copy. Now you can uh, disconnect the SCU from your DCM, install the DCM cover, and stow the SCU in the pouch. EV1 in work. EV2. And since the spacesuits have switched to internal battery power, the spacewalk has officially begun at 7.14 a.m. Central Time. Copy. Hopper, you can now check that the deep press pump man ISO valve is closed. Deep press pump ISO valve closed. All right, both of you on your DCM, please take your temperature control valve to max hot. It work. You want max hot. You need to max hot. Now switch water to on, O-N. EV1, water on. EV2, on. Check your DCM is blank and bite is off. EV1, blank, bite off. EV2, blank, bite off. Now you can set your temperature control valve as desired. EV1, two. And uh, check your suit P gauge and report, please, to us. E1, 
EV1 suit pressure gauge is 4.2. EV2, 4.2. All right, you'll be exiting in tonight, uh, but there's only about five minutes left, so you can set your visors as you'd like. You can go ahead and open the uh, hatch thermal cover and egress on your way out. Copy. Uh, on your way out, please check that the uh, pit pin is in place and uh, please give us a read of the hatch gauge. Copy. And there are several pit pins. Any one in particular? And the hatch gauge is zero decimal two. All right, Hopper. I am heading out for our door. Copy, 0.2. Zero decimal two. I'm going to come your way a little bit first. You got, can you uh, go toward the UIA? Later. There you go. Thank you. And then yeah, I can see the two inboard pins and they're both in place. Yeah, copy that, Ike. We, it, we're just looking for the um, the forward hinge, the aft pin. Uh, so if you're saying both inboard ones are, are in place, that's good. Okay. In place. Okay, can you go towards the uh, hatch? Oh, the other hatch, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Equipment lock? Thank you. Yeah. All right, and I'll be out of your way soon. Bye-bye. All right. For you, you can transfer crew lock bag number three to Ike. All right, I see it. Get a red on it. For sure, yep, that says three. Thanks for checking. Actually, let me present to the other side. A little better. What a gentleman. I've got a red on it. Okay, let me take the, I've got control. You can take the red off. Roger. Red is off. Thank you. And it's two, uh, just one of the rings on the airlock here. Perfect. And you ready for me to come out? Yeah, thank you, Tethers. We're kind of hanging out in the hatchway. Roger. And the weather is great. She has a good dress. I do. This view of Mike Hopkins egressing the Quest airlock coming from the inside of the equipment lock portion and the camera we saw Soichi Noguchi setting up earlier. Already outside the hatch, he is joining NASA's Victor Glover. You'll be able to tell them apart today by the stripes on their spacesuits. Hawkins is wearing an unmarked suit. Meanwhile, Victor Glover will have red rings around the legs of his spacesuit. Actually, your VR key tab looks a little different than the other two coming this way. Roger. Okay, yep, it's a, it's a little bit of play, but it's up. you got three tabs up. 
give me a yaw each direction. I'll check your safer handles. Okay. All right, your right safer handle is down. Hand control module door closed. Your left safer handle. Looks like you might be able to tap it like uh, half a centimeter down. Roger that. It's down. Okay. And safety tethers. Unlock, unlocked. Your hooks are locked. Three extender has two small hooks. Uh, hooks that are locked. All right, and I see you got a little down here. You look good. Okay. I do not see your WBS light or your green light. Okay, stand by. But now, I got to. Okay, let me look at your tabs. I see one, two. And where's that third one? There it is. Your tabs, your left safer handle is up right now. Okay. Thank you. And now it's closed. Down. Your left safer handle is the right safer handle is down and door is closed. Okay. And from a safety tether standpoint. You see two on your right D ring, they're locked, unlocked, unlocked, and I've got your anchor hook. And it is locked. Okay. I'll show you in a good config. I'm going to lock that green hook as well. Roger. Okay. Good config. So, sounds like uh, good buddy checks for both of you. Uh, we'll take a baseline HAB check and a uh, hatch thermal cover close, please. Roger. EV1, tap is dry. EV2, half is dry. Okay, how many shape wants the uh, tether? Copy. Clear. Copy that. All right. The cover is uh, mostly closed, and we've got the weight tether going in there, so. Yeah, we copy that. So whenever you're a ready hopper, you can retrieve the uh, vent tool extender bag from the top of the airlock. My word. A quick satellite handover, but uh, just before that, you saw the sun come up on the International Space Station. As we mentioned, the sun rises every 45 minutes or sets every 45 minutes. The space station traveling around the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour and currently 260 statute miles over the Pacific Ocean. In WIF 11, that's the APFR without an ingress aid. Uh, okay, in work. 11. The tasks have already begun with Mike Hopkins preparing to grab the event tool extender bag. Crew members will need this for the venting of the ammonia, early ammonia system jumpers, their first task of the day. Okay, my VIP rep is to the vent tool extender bag. Copy hopper, you can put on your BRT and then make your way out uh, to P1. Roger that. And D3 V1, no, just confirm, I am taking the whip extender, correct? Right? 
No, just the APFR. You can leave the WIF extender. Okay, thanks for clarifying. Just the APFR copy. That bag look hopper. Hold. <laughs> okay, let's do my VRT. This view from Victor Glover's helmet camera. We'll be seeing astronaut eye views throughout the day today, and you'll be able to distinguish whose is whose by that number in the bottom right hand corner. Victor Glover's camera is marked with the number 20, and Hawkins has the number 22. All right, I promise you to awesome pop that. To APFR only on the BRT, and I'll be standing. We're in a quick handover of the tracking data and relay satellite systems. Just beforehand, we heard Victor Glover discussing with the ground team that he was using the APFR, that's the Articulating Portable Foot Restraint. He'll be taking that with him today. That gives the astronauts a place to secure themselves, secure their footing, and get a little leverage while working on the space station. A uh, handover, so if you communicate anything else, I missed it. That's it. All right, I come on phase one. That's good. All right, Hopper, you're looking for the uh, uh, Bay 12. Uh, where you'll drop, drop your anchor hooks on handrail 3651 and 3652. And just a quick uh, reminder about a caution to avoid inadvertent contact with the deployed TUS cable along the Zenith and Nader cedar rails. All right. Going under the MT. Okay, past the port sea of car continuing outbound. Making great signs. And Hopper, you're dropping your anchor hook on handrail 3651. That's the long one below you. Roger that. OK, 
Okay, UB2, Anchor Hook, 3651, yellow close, right lock, black on black. That's a good full test. Copy, and the reel unlocked? And the reel is unlocked. Copy, you can now attach Ike's anchor hook to handrail 3652, the small one. Didn't work. This view from the high definition camera on Mike Hopkins on Mike Hopkins spacesuit. This high definition view will provide for even better views during the Columbus uh, work to, he'll be performing today, specifically at the Bartolomeo Science Platform. Your anchor hook is attached to 3652, bell close, auto lock, lock on black, good pull test. Have a go to release your waist tether. All right, my waist tether is back to my workstation, and the airlock waist tether is going inside. Thermal cover is open. All right, Hopper, you can make your way out to the P6 worksite. Copy that, gauntlets are in place. Copy. Andy, the thermal cover is closed. Excellent, thank you. Then you can head out to the P6 worksite as well. On the way. And as you're both translating, uh, I'll read you a couple warnings. Um, just a reminder that the P4 BGAs are rotating. Please avoid, avoid contact with any of the rotating structure. Also, please avoid contact with the radiator. And finally, just a reminder about the sharp edge hazards out of the P6 uh, worksite. The pip pins on the TTCR and STCR uh, do not meet the EVA kick load, and so they would be a, present a sharp edge if broken. And also, there's the um, outboard MT rail attachment lug that has a sharp edge. You want that. Me too. All right, hop, rub up on face one, coming your way. Okay, I'm at the storage. All right. And also, just a reminder to you, Ike, to uh, check your gauntlets are in place before you cross the Sarge. We'll do. And let me know if you need uh, guidance to get to the work site. Uh, if not, uh, Hopper, you're looking uh, for P5 handrail 5223 for your green hook. Copy. All right, Hopper, I'm going under the MT now. Thank you. This view from Mike Hopkins' high-definition camera, you can see some of those batteries that were removed and replaced earlier this year, as well as over the last few years, upgrading the space station's power supply. All right, now I'm passing our seat to the anchors. Roger. Nice work, nice work. Throughout the day, you will hear calls made to the crew members. You may hear Ike and Hopper. Those are the call signs given to Ike, Victor Glover, and Hopper, Mike Hopkins.
Glover now making his way to the first work site to vent those early ammonia system jumpers alongside Mike Hopkins. Okay, green hose is down. Copy, green hook down. You can go ahead and uh, go to the worksite and stow the uh, bag that you've got with you. Roger, end work. And Ike, you're looking for handrail 5231 for your green hook. Copy, yes, 5105, heading out. And Hopper, you're still in the bag, just to zenith of the, those uh, jumpers between handrails 5339 and 5342. Copy, 5339 and 5342. Can you give me that green hook for handrail again? 5231, it's just opposite of where Hopper dropped his. Uh, 5231, okay, I'm visual. Andy, do you have any issue with me just dropping it right here on 5203, which is just right adjacent to it, that I don't have to cross over the top of this safety tether? Yep, that's fine. Right, 5203 it is. Green hook is in place. Copy. You can uh, translate out to WIF 27 on P6 where you'll be stowing the APFR. Boy. Both of my reels are unlocked. Okay, Andy, I'm heading out to get my rich man found. I'll get me out of the way if I Copy. Hopper, I'm at P6, the inboard corner of the IEA. Roger that. I'm away. OK, 
Okay, Andy, give me that whiff number again. 27, so it's on the forward edge. It's almost about as far out as you can. There should be uh, an APFR in the adjacent uh, whiff 31. So you'll be putting this one in 27, which is just next to that. That is a great detail, right next to the, sorry about that, Robert. Right next to the other one, all right? I see it. I also see the eventual back. All right, Andy, I'm with 27. And Ike, um, when you store the APFR, clocking is not so important. Um, but if you want to, you can put it in 12. Okay, Andy, uh, rich man's fair lead is down. Heading back to the back. Copy. And the first thing you'll be doing is retrieving the vent tool adapter um, and removing one cap from that. Andy clocking to 12, it points the uh, boot plate in toward the IEA. Perfect, that gives a uh, hopper uh, room to get past it later. Uh, the other settings, we have time, I think, so the other settings are Indigo, Indigo, Fox 12. So Indigo, well, it works, and it is in with a good pull test, good twist test, and it is black on black. Indigo, Indigo, Fox 12, it works. Good, good read back, and just uh, give us a check on the pitch knob as well, please. The astronauts are now at their first workstation of the day where they will be working on the early ammonia system, venting two jumpers, one of which Glover will later re relocate to the outside of the airlock. Remove the cap. Uh, go ahead and inspect the QD for us. Okay. There are a lot of moving pieces for this first task, and you just heard about the QD, that's the Vent Tool Quick Disconnect. From the lock position, it's a little sticky and ratchety to push in, wasn't a huge, so 15 pounds of force maybe, and then turning it the first 15, 20 degrees, it was that same feeling. As soon as I got to have that, it uh, moved freely. I got it to India, India, and it locked freely, and then uh, it's the same thing, the last 20 degrees, a little ratchety, but it popped out, and I can push it in, and it pops right back out. We we copy all that. We appreciate the words. Okay, central adapter. I got the captors off of it. Doing inspection. No fog. Good sleeve. Good seal. Copy. You can uh, grab the vent, uh, or they have the. You can remove the plug from the vent tool QD and, and give us an inspection of that too, as well, please. Roger. In work. And I see a good lanyard. Once Hopkins has removed the plug from the vent tool quick disconnect, he will mate that quick disconnect to the vent tool adapter. Good fingers. Seals. Copy, so now we'll mate the vent tool adapter to the vent tool QD, and I'll read out the steps in block C for you. I copy. Okay, so verify that the female QD is ready to mate by uh, making sure the detent button is up and the forward white band is not visible. Up and not visible. Go ahead and mate the QD and check that the forward white band is visible. Uh, 
Okay. Next hopper, perform a snapback test and check that the forward white band is still visible. Invisible. Finally, perform a pull test and a visual gap test. Pull test looks good. And Ike, once you've uh, once you've stowed the crew lock bag, then you can uh, ret to the mutt end effector um, and attach the L bracket with nozzle, nozzle to the uh, mutt end effector ecom. Okay, I'm not there yet. But uh, what were the uh, settings for the APFR India India? Box 12 is what I have set. That's perfect. Okay. All right, now I'll stow the bag and where exactly am I putting that? Five three three three. Which is right behind you guys. Okay, so as soon as I get out of the way. Okay, Andy, I have the good tool and adapter ready. Yep, and next. I'm ready to Next, we'll open the vent tool QD valve, and when you're ready for that, then you can depress the detent. Okay, go ahead and depress the detent button and move the bale to the forward position. Okay, forward position. Detent button is up. That's why the is visible. Excellent. That means the uh, QD is open. You can now retrie retrieve the vent tool and the vent tool adapter combo. Roger. And I got an audible for you. Roger. I'm done. What's your audible? Will you can still the bag since it's behind you and I can start on the vent tool bag stuff? Yeah. Stand by. Let's go. You know, just ready to my BRT. Copy. So it's got uh, a large, small, and a uh, integral. See that? Yeah, you can take your rip. Right, Andy, I'm at the uh, vent tool bag. Okay, so uh, Ike, you can uh, ret to the mutt end effector from the vent tool bag, and then you can attach the L bracket with the nozzle to the uh, mutt ecom fitting. Uh, the clocking uh, is a yaw setting of alpha. And just double check that the French hook from the nozzle is attached to the L bracket. Copy. I'm ready to, to the mutt in effect. That's the nozzle. The French hook is connected. And you're putting uh, that L bracket into the. Uh, Mutt ecom, so that the L bracket is parallel to the handrail, which would be in the mutt jaws. Yep, in work. And 
hopper. Once you have a, a RET on the vent tool and the vent tool adapter combo, then you can translate down to M10 on the uh, T6 long spacer. That's the inboard side of the uh, connections. After that, I am there. Okay, you can remove the wire tie and booty and then the spid from M10. And just a reminder uh, for a caution here, that handrail on the EAS jumper box cannot take BRT loads. All right, Andy, the mutt and the bracket are together. It is uh, the bracket alpha alpha is, sorry, no CDT, parallel to the handrail. Fix that now. Yeah, Ike, it looks like you're about 90 degrees off. Yep. And Hopper, once you've uh, removed the wire tie and the spid, uh, you can put them in the trash bag, which is in the crew lock bag. Roger that. Okay. Alpha Alpha is parallel to where the handrail would be. It is mated. And if you didn't hear me earlier, good French hook. Copy, and then just check that the e-com is locked. Com is locked, lock on block. Copy, you can unpack the vent tool extender and untether it from the bag. And then you can translate uh, aft to handrail 5304, where you'll be attaching the mutt and defector. Okay. Work. Now 40 minutes into today's spacewalk, our crew members are still getting situated for their first task, which is venting the early ammonia system jumpers. One of these may potentially be needed on the starboard side of the truss, so once vented, Victor Glover will be taking one of the jumpers to the outside of the airlock where it will be stowed for later use. You want to have them read at the tier mini workstation and keep them there rather than going back to the crew lock bag, that's also up to you. I'm going to go over the top of you. Roger. All right, Andy, now I'm on my way. Give me that hand roll again, please. 5304, and you'll be attaching the mutt so that the uh, nozzle points aft. And I uh, just make sure, please, that the uh, jaws on the mutt and defector are attached to the handrail between the two stanchions, because this one does have a part of the yep. stanchion going over. Yeah, part of the handrail going over the stanchion. Yep, I see that, and uh, I'm outside 304, and I won't put it on those little cantilever parts. Hopper, once you've removed the spid, um, go ahead and push the bale uh, full forward, please. Roger.
All right, Andy, Alpha Alpha is parallel to the handle. It's in between two stanchions. Working on the pitch to one now. Copy. Pitch to one is good, and then just double check that the mutt end effector is locked. And work. But end effector is locked. And so, uh, I, uh, good uh, position is 30 degrees from aft, so slightly above the horizon. I think that's, uh, that's what one lines up with, I believe. I'm working on that now. Hey, this guy's stubborn. The crew will orient the jumpers so that they are venting ammonia away from the crew and away from the space station. What are you working on, Hopper? No, the stud doesn't want to come off. You're oriented. And Hopper, uh, you might try pushing forward on the QD bale, and that might offload the spid. There we go. All right. Excellent, we saw that. And then just uh, ensure that the bale is pushed forward fully, please. Pull forward. All right, you can remove the second cap from the vent tool adapter and uh, inspect it for uh, fog and debris. Roger, and work. This view from the helmet camera of Victor Glover, our EV-1, extravehicular one crew member today. The astronauts will be using a vent tool and a vent tool extender to vent the early ammonia system jumpers. Yep, that looks excellent. We're seeing it in your helmet cam. Looks perfect. Now just uh, check that the e-com is locked. Excellent. You can head back to the uh, vent tool extender bag. And there you'll be removing the plug from the vent tool extender. And uh, if you need uh, detailed steps, I've got them. Otherwise, you can go ahead and remove the plug. Okay, it's removed. Looking at the mail end here. We'll slide. Please. Copy. Sounds good. Um, once Ike has retrieved the vent tool extender and removed the plug, then you can go ahead and give them him the vent tool nozzle, and he'll be inserting that into the vent tool extender. Roger.
next to your left arm there, Ike. Thank you. So it's a plug is right next to your left arm. Okay. Indy? Copy. You can get the uh, tool nozzle from Hopper and insert that into the extender. The vent tool is inserted into the extender. The lock soft dock is very, very soft, so it's locked right now, but it pulls out of locks very easily. Copy that. It's locked. Okay, that's uh. And Andy got to go to. Andy got to go to remove my rat from the uh, the tool. Yes, you are go. You are go. And uh, as you're doing that, I'll just give you a uh, big picture. We are about to start venting ops. We are in orbital night, so we do have 20 minutes. Um, so we do have time for this. Big picture words, um, Hopper, you'll be working on um, M10, you'll be closing the QD, then you'll be demating it, then you'll be mating it to the vent tool adapter, and then you'll be opening the valve. Roger. I'm looking at M10. Hey, Hopper, yeah, that'd be our key right here. Is that going to mess with you? Nope, not at all. And uh, and I uh, obviously had that wrong, which you probably noticed. We're in daylight, not in night. Um, so we have a six-minute thermal clock to do these four actions, Hopper. Review them already. So we're going to close this, mate, mate, open. When that last open happens, that's when we start the vent. That's your. And uh, just a clarification we are 18 minutes from night, uh, which means that the six minute timer. Uh, will run into that 15-minute buffer before night begins, so it actually means that uh, we do not have a limit on these ops. Okay, very nice. like that answer, Andy. Okay, Ike, when you are in a good position on the forward edge, then I'll start with uh, the ops for Hopper. Ike is in position. Copy. Are you ready, Hopper? Ready. Okay, so you can close the QD extender on M10, and I'll read you the steps. Uh, first step, move bail forward to the full open position. Forward, full open. Check that the white, the aft white band is visible. Well, I do not see. Oh, I, I got an aft white band visible. Check the detent button is fully installed, that it's up and that it can be depressed. Fully installed, up and depressed. Assess and counteract side loads. 
While depressing the detent button, move the bale forward to the open position with significant force. Complete. Then depress the detent button and move bale aft. Check forward white band is visible and detent button is up. Visible, detent button is up. All right, we'll now demate so you can pull back on the release ring and demate the QD. Roger, same work. If I can help with anything. Yeah, you want to grab that uh, the release tool? Release tool? Yeah. Copy. You can use it ready to the bag. Yep. You okay with that? Yep, absolutely. What you're expecting? Exactly what I was expecting. Okay, I'll give you some slack on the rest. But you got it. I got the rest. I hear it. Got a handover coming up now. As you heard, we are now in a satellite handover. The astronauts continue to prepare to vent the early ammonia system jumper. Just about an hour into today's spacewalk, and this is the first task for Mike Hopkins and a Victor Glover. At the early ammonia system, they will vent two jumpers, and one will be relocated to the outside of the airlock for future use. The bail on this one right next to you is also yeah, no. in the way. This is a tight, tight yeah. Okay, is it in place? Oh, yeah, it's partly in place. So if you try, I'll hold it in place. There we go. Two more. And we're back with you. Did you say you got it released? Released. Copy. Check. Release ring is retracted and the forward white band is not visible. No see a white band. No white band. Copy. Inspect uh, male and female QD for debris damage or ammonia crystals. Okay, we have a few ammonia crystals that are coming out from the female. Yeah, we see that. Okay. Yeah, you can see there's a... Yep, let's go ahead and mate that hopper. So uh, okay. you, can, you can mate the QD okay. extender to the vent tool adapter. So verify that it's ready to mint. Check that the detent button is up and the forward white band not visible. Detent button is up, forward white band not visible. Go ahead and mate the QD. And check forward white band okay, is visible. Forward white band visible. Perform snapback test and check that the forward white visible. band is still visible. Then a pull test and a visual gap test. Visible, the pull test, the gap test. Copy.
Happy. So uh, next we'll be opening uh, the um, valve, which will start venting. So uh, Ike, be prepared. Ike is prepared. Hopper, you can depress the detent button and move bail to forward position. Forward. Lost light band visible. Detent button is up. I see venting. Copy all. Rate is going down. It's almost stopped. The ice level. Venting has begun of the first jumper on the early ammonia system. between the two jumpers, the wire tie should stay captive to the jumper that you're currently venting. And there is no wire tie there. Jumpers are independent. Copy, so no wire tie between the two jumpers. Is that correct? No wire tie between the two jumpers. That's, that's affirmative. the right view. That is more than I thought. Yeah. Still going. You expected that much, Andy? We're checking. Three closed. Hopper, do you want to check if yeah, M3 oh. is closed? On my way. Venting continues of the first jumper on the early ammonia system. That is scheduled to last about five minutes. M3. Show forward, white band is visible. Uh, just to confirm, Hopper, you said the forward vi white band is visible on M3, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, that's a good uh, config. The QD is closed as as expected. Okay. Still going. That would be consistent. Diane Austin is little pick up in progress. And Hopper, next for you, you'll be working on M3, so no need to put the booty back on if you removed it. Right. I think for right too, he needs to. Uh, to this FH01, is that right? 
still be taking it once I release it. That's affirmative. Okay. Good work. Mitch, you're actually right over your shoulder there, right? So if you want to go outward a little bit. Uh, here, hold on a sec. Let me reposition and I can get it. As venting continues on the early ammonia system, the International Space Station has crossed the Terminator line, or the difference between day and night while on orbit. The International Space Station now flying 262 statute miles southwest of the Maldives. All right, our five minute vent time has expired. If you can uh, confirm that you see no more venting, then we'll go ahead and press on. And EB1, I see no more venting for about 45 seconds to a minute. All right, Ike, you can go ahead uh, and close the QD extender valve. I'll read you the steps when you're ready. Venting is complete on the first jumper. Victor Glover will disconnect or close the quick, quick disconnect extender valve. This is the jumper that he will coil and relocate to near the airlock. Yeah. Actually, the power was off. You have no light right now. Now you have a good green light. Excellent, thank you. I copy. Okay, Andy, ready for steps. So um, you are going to close a QD extender valve, and uh, I'll read you the steps uh, when you're ready. Ready. All right, you can move bail forward to the full open position. Forward, full open. Check aft white band is visible. Aft white band is visible. Check detent button is fully installed, that it's up and that it can be depressed. Fully installed, up and depressible. All right, assess and counteract side loads, and then while depressing the detent button, move bail forward to the full open position with significant force. Bail is full open, full forward. All right, now depress the detent button and move bail aft to close the valve. and the button has popped up. Copy, and then just check the forward white band is visible now. 
All right, guys, um, we'd like to take just a minute uh, to stop at this point and have a quick discussion about uh, your impression of the amount of ammonia that was vented when you demated M10. Okay. Um, I felt like it was more than I was expecting just in this line, but it did stop. Uh, is M10, are you talking about what came out the nozzle, or we, let's just clarify which what, which venting we're talking about. The stuff we're, that was close to us or the stuff that went out? We're talking about the stuff that was close to you, the QD when it was demated at M10 and Hopper was inspecting it, and a few flakes were coming out. Hopper was inspecting it, a few flakes were coming out. Where? Let's say less than 30. Less than 30? Less than 30? Did they contact you, do you think? I had some contact my advisor. Uh, EV2, excuse me, EV1 didn't see any contact, uh, EV2 or EV1, but I was in a, a weird position with the sun. All right, guys, we appreciate the report. Uh, from our camera views down here, we did see what looked like propulsive uh, movement of the flakes, so we're going to go ahead and be conservative and call that a suspected case. And so at the end of all of these ops, we'll do a, a, an inspection of both of you. Uh, so, uh, Hopper, you can make your way down to M3, uh, where we'll be starting to demate that. And Ike, uh, if you you can if you can verify that you're tethered to the uh, QD extender, then we'll uh, start working on demating the QD extender from the vent tool adapter. Okay, I'm currently uh, ready to the bail of the QD extender. That's the piece that on the, the extra bail that's on the end, F2, right? Sorry about the adapter, I'm, I'm ready to a bail. Yeah, that's fine, you're ready to the bail of the QD extender. That's good. Uh, when you're ready, then we'll work to demate. I think I'm ready to the bail of the QD extender. And Hopper, are you ready to demate as well? Because then I'll give you the uh, same steps simultaneously. Who's ready? Okay, Ike, so you are demating the extender from the vent tool adapter, and Hopper, you are demating the jumper from M3. Hopper, give me one. And Hopper, uh, for you especially, you want to assess and counteract side loads here prior to demate. When you're ready, you can both pull back on the release ring and demate the QD. B1, demated. B2, in work. Once it's uh, released, then uh, check that the release ring is retracted and the forward white band is not visible. One white band not visible. All right, I see white band not visible. Copy. You can uh, inspect the QD, uh, the male and female QD, for debris damage or ammonia crystals. You one both sides, male and female look good. No. 
Uh, male side, the uh, field looks uh, uniform. And I don't see any ammonia crystals on either. D2. I see uh, no fog, good seals, good fingers, no crystals. Copy. We appreciate the inspection. Now uh, you'll be uh, swapping what you've got. So, Hopper, you'll be given the uh, jumper to Ike, and Ike, you will be given the vent tool adapter and vent tool to Hopper. Stop that right there at the end. I have the uh, jumper in hand, Hopper. Roger that. Let me uh, get on the RT here, and I'll come up and get it. Okay, copy. It's uh, right there in the corner of the IEA. Roger. And Ike, once you have the uh, jumper, then you'll be installing the plug into the uh, QD extender and, and closing the booty. Uh, the booty is in the crew lock bag. Yeah, Ike, if you could hand it down a little closer. Sorry, Ike, the, uh, the, the plug that you're installing. Okay, I have it, thank you. I'll be plugged from the crew lock bag, install into the extender. Work. Yeah, so one plug is on the oh, lanyard okay, and one... Okay. Ike, one plug is on the lanyard, the other plug is in the crew lock bag. Copy of the user which I use. Well, you'll need to install a plug on both ends. Uh, I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah, so on the extender end, there'll be a plug on a lanyard. On the single QD end, uh, you'll have to put use a plug from the crew lock, crew, crew lock bag. Copy. Work. And Hopper, the you the end is test. Confirm I can take the uh, bag. White band is visible. Forward white band visible. Yep, you can remove the 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 red. And Hopper, you can go ahead and translate to the free floating QD on the uh, second jumper. Got it. All right, you can remove the booty and the plug from the uh, extender, QD extender, and then have a look, check for debris and damage. Okay, plug is removed. And Ike, once you've installed plugs on both ends of uh, the jumper, then you can coil the jumper around We're the uh, copy. Yep. Copy. Bye. And you've got a good inspection on the extender, profile, fingers, it seal. Copy, Hopper. So now we will be mating the vent tool adapter to that uh, QD extender. Uh, we'll only be mating it and not opening it at the moment. So when you're ready, I'll give you the uh, steps for mating it. Me too. Ready. Okay, so verify it's ready for mate so you can check that the detent button is up and the forward white band not visible. A quick satellite handover of the tracking and data relay satellite systems. We've just seen crew members Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover have vented the first jumper on the early ammonia system and, then, and now are working toward venting the second. We're coming up on an hour and 20 minutes into today's spacewalk and because of suspected 
contamination of ammonia from uh, the quick disconnect that the astronauts were working with earlier. They will uh, inspect each other and conduct some tests while in the airlock upon the conclusion of the spacewalk today. A lot of wire ties on this uh, QD. Are there? Yeah. There actually was one wire tie connecting the two, but it was near the extender. I didn't book originally. Okay, we copy Hopper. And I am ready to mate. The temp button is up. Board light band's not. Copy. And Hopper, that wire tie that you just reported, is that uh, on the uh, jumper that Ike has or on the jumper that's still uh, installed or that you're working that was, on? That was on the jumper that Ike has. It's on the one that Ike has. And there's like uh, five of them. All right. Copy. At least you won't run uh, run out, Ike. Um, Hopper, you can mate the QD and check that the forward white band is visible. Roger that. Eight eight four white band visible. Perform snapback test and check forward white band is still visible. Still visible. All right, perform pull test and visual gap test. Pull test complete. The gap. Okay, you can go. Uh, you can translate over to M9 on the uh, P6 long spacer and remove the booty and the spid from that QD. You can uh, stow the spid temporarily on your mini workstation or put it in the crew lock bag if you want. This is the timing. While Mike Hopkins continues to prepare the second jumper for venting on the early ammonia system, Victor Glover is coiling the first jumper that was vented. He will relocate that to near the airlock and it will be stowed outside the space station. Going like slowly but steadily. <laughs> like I got the better of the two deals here. Yeah. Uh, you talk about it over dinner. <laughs> okay, one spit removed. Copy, one spit removed. Um, at this point, uh, we're, we have 17 minutes of night left, so we'd like to get working on the venting ops. Uh, Ike, you can finish coiling the jumper uh, after we've vented. 
Uh, so go ahead and get in position at the forward edge like before. And then big picture, Hopper, you'll be closing the QD on M9, and then we'll be opening the QD extender that's uh, attached to the vent tool adapter. Roger. D1. Okay, Hopper, when you're ready, then we'll close uh, QD on M9. Ready. Move bale forward to the full open position. Full open. Check aft white band visible. 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 Check detent button fully installed, that it's up and that it can be depressed. Fully installed, up and can be depressed. Assess and counteract side loads, and then while depressing the detent button, move bail full forward to the open position with significant force. Wait. Then depress detent button and move bail aft to close of a valve. Aft, forward white band is visible, detent button is up. Copy. You can uh, cover with uh, booty best effort. And Ike, are you clear of nozzle? I'm clear of the nozzle. On the forward edge of the IEA. Copy. And uh, Hopper, whenever you're ready, then uh, we'll open the QD extender that's attached to the vent tool adapter, the other end of that jumper. Roger. I gotta get in position. Okay, I'm in position. Copy. So you can now depress the detent button and move bail to the forward position, and this will start venting. Forward position, halfway band is visible, detent button is up. We are venting. Copy venting, and we have another five minute timer on this vent. An hour and 28 minutes into today's spacewalk, the crew members are now venting the second jumper on the early ammonia system that will be vented today. The first, we saw a vent time of five minutes, and we're looking for the same on this one as well. Just give them a good shake uh, to release any potential ammonia crystals. Take the tools before throwing them in the back. And Andy, while we're waiting, I'll check. I've got uh, a lot of like black smudge on the fingertips from the operation. Right index finger, a little bit of RTD damage, healing. You can probably see it in the HECA. Yeah, we copy and we see, Hopper. Otherwise, they look good. Dry half. Copy, Hopper, and uh, we'll call that uh, good gloves. You want to have a dry half? I'll give you a glove check in a minute.
While venting continues, the astronauts provide the ground with a glove and HAP check. HAP stands for helmet absorption pad to make sure there's no liquid that is loose in their spacesuit. And the astronauts, of course, use their hands almost exclusively during a spacewalk, and so they do frequent glove checks to make sure that the gloves are in good condition. Hopper, you were closest. Uh, if Ike, you could use your helmet lights uh, to look over Hopper's suit to see if you see any signs of uh, ammonia on him. Andy, what I can see is clean. And the top of your helmet looks clean. Normal. Hey, what I can see, uh, Hopper looks normal. Copy. So what you looks normal. Okay, we copy. Thanks, Ike. Hopper's suit looks normal. While we wait, Hopper, if you want to take a quick look at Ike as well, we'd appreciate it. Stand by. I was so comfy, Andy. The crew members are performing a visual check of each other's suits to ensure there is no ammonia present. It's good if I didn't have this big go. Yeah. That's good view. you. I can see the top of your helmet. I can see your light, your cliffs, your shoulders, your arms. I see nothing that's about candy. Copy that. We appreciate it. It looks clean. All right, so once uh, the vent timer has expired, uh, Ike, you'll be working to coil the jumper uh, around that uh, vent tool extender bag, and then the Hopper will be working to close the uh, jumper QD extender. One, two. And EV1 has uh, good gloves. They look like they did when I got out here. Copy, Ike. All right, our uh, five-minute vent timer has expired. If you could uh, have a look at the uh, uh, vent tool extender and see if anything is coming out, we'd appreciate it. I've got my helmet light shining in that direction, and I do not see anything. It is dark, though, but I don't see anything. Like it is not venting. A 
copy, Andy. Yeah, we're copying. We're just trying to drag our feet a little bit to give it another minute or so. <laughs> no problem. All right, we'll say that's uh, good for venting. Uh, Hopper, you can now uh, work to close a QD extender, and I'll read you the steps when you're ready. QD is ready. All right, move bail forward to the full open position. Wait. Check aft white band is visible. Visible. Check detent button fully installed. It's up and can be depressed. Fully installed, up and depressed. Assess and counteract side loads, and then while depressing the detent button, move bail forward to the open position with significant force. Complete. Depress detent button and move bail aft. Complete. Forward white band is visible. Detent button is up. Copy, jumper is closed. So you can demate the uh, vent tool adapter from the QD uh, extender, and I'll read you the steps when you're ready. Okay, hold on one sec. I, when I do this, vent tool adapter is going to be, uh, and the vent tool extender will be floating free. Okay, so the uh, rest of it, this one is still mated. Yep, I just wanted to, it might come over towards you. Okay, thank so you. Don't Andy. be surprised. Okay, and they're all uh, hooked together as well, so yep. okay. it's secure. All right, Andy. I'll ready. be on the lookout. Hopper, did you say you're ready? I'm ready. Copy. Pull back on release spring and demate the QD. Wait. Check the release spring is retracted and forward white band is not visible. Retracted, forward white band not visible. And then just no pod. Copy, you read my mind. Please, good to see you. Yeah. Looks like uh Ike when you uh take this up like there's a few, you know, ammonia flakes on the inside on the sleeve. Again? This adapter. There's uh it looks there's looks like some white flakes on the uh on the sleeve on the inside. Okay. Uh, what do you need me to do with it? I've got my hands full of this extension. No, no, I don't need to do anything. Okay. I'm just giving you a heads up when uh, I think that's the part where shake it and, and try and dislodge those. Crush. Yeah, we. And these, the extender. No pod, good fingers. Good field, no crystals. Copy that. And uh, Ike, those uh, crystals that Hopper reported uh, should be ice, so it should be no worries. Just make sure to shake them away from you. We'll do that. Still working on the uh, bundle. Copy. Uh, Hopper, next for you, we will mate the QD extender to M3. Okay, I'm ready. M3, no pod, it feels good sleep. And I just gave you the extender. Copy. So uh, just check detent button is up and forward white band not visible. Detent button is up, forward white band not visible. You have a go to mate the QD. And work. Both jumpers for the early ammonia system have been vented now. 
We're coming up on an hour and 40 minutes into today's spacewalk, and Victor Glover is working on coiling the first jumper that was vented that will be relocated to outside of the Quest airlock. The second jumper will remain in place on the early ammonia system. All right, perform snapback test and check that the forward white band is still visible. Visible. Perform pull test and visual gap test. Pull test. And good gap test. Copy. Now you can uh, check that the booty is installed on that uh, extender. Roger that in work. And just a heads up, we're a minute away from sunrise. Thank you. As the crew members wrap up their tasks at the early ammonia system, we have a question from Jeffrey who wants to know, uh, do the astronauts need to make preparations for sunrises and sunsets? You just heard that we were less than a minute from expecting sunrise on the station. The astronauts do have opportunities with that announcement to make some preparations. They can lower their visors if they'd like some shade. They can also turn on those headlamps like you see here if they are entering a night pass. So when you're in position at M9, let me know and I'll give you the steps to demate the QD. Andy, when can I take my red off of the uh, jumper? How many wire tires do I need to engage? Hey, Ike, we'd uh, uh, appreciate if you could get the adjustable installed uh, between the jumper and the uh, bag handrail before you remove your red. And Andy, I'm in position. All right, so we are going to work to demate the QD from M9. So first thing you can do is pull back on the release ring and demate the QD. Check 
that the release string is retracted and forward white band is not visible. Retracted, forward white band not visible. And we'll take an inspection. In mine, no fraud, good seals, good sleeve. And stand by for. And the QD, same, good good feels, good fingers. Copy, so. All right, Hopper, uh, we'll also take, please, an inspection of M10, which is where you'll be mating this QD2. Roger. Fine. Good seals. Sweet. Okay, we're ready to mate the QD to M10. So when you're ready, um, check that the detent button is up and the forward white band is not visible. Detent button is up, forward white band is not visible. You can mate the QD and check that the forward white band is visible. Forward white band is visible. Perform snapback test and check that the forward white band is still visible. And Ike, you might have a uh, copy, so you can perform a pull test and a visual gap test. And Ike, your WVS might have uh, switched off, so if you could uh, try to power it on, back on for us, we'd appreciate it. My hands are busy, and when I'm done wrestling with this cute, this uh, jumper, I will gladly turn that back on for you. Excellent. We'll take it. Thanks. A good pull, good gap. Copy. Uh, we'll take that as mated so you can install the booty over the QD pair and use wire ties as needed. Okay, and you don't need this lock, correct? That's correct. Uh, we're going to leave it in the closed position. Not locked. Got a lock on it. Hopper, you mean locked with a SPID? No, there's a, a lock on it. Not the SPID, just the rotating lock. Yeah, we'll take uh, the collar into the uh, locked position. We'd appreciate that, please. Okay, it's in the lock, and I could probably go do it on uh, M3 as well, on that extender. I think there was one there as well. Yeah, Hopper, we'll take it. It's not actually required, but uh, we'd appreciate it. No problem. And before you uh, uh, leave that worksite, we'll also ask you to install a cap on uh, M9. It should be on a lanyard. Yeah, I see one. I'll get it here.
And Hopper, once uh, you've installed the cap and you're finished at the worksite, you can retrieve your fair lead and then uh, help Ike with stowing that uh, jumper around the bag. Roger that. The first task of the day is almost complete with Mike Hopkins finishing up at the early ammonia system, both jumper cables having been vented. Meanwhile, Victor Glover is coiling the first cable that was vented. He will be taking that back to the Quest airlock and stowing it outside the International Space Station for future potential use. Collars in place. In three. Copy. One hour and 52 minutes into today's spacewalk. International Space Station currently flying 260 statute miles over the Pacific Ocean. I don't know if you want me to this, man. <laughs> Hold on my word. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> I got it. It's just slow work. Yeah. I don't know if another set of hands is going to really do anything. Uh, if you want me just to hold something in place while you do your magic, happy to do that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure what it's going to buy us, but I'll take the support. I'm finishing up now. Okay. Got that three wire ties in, the adjustables in. It's just not as pretty as that nice drawing. <laughs> Three wire ties and then adjustable. How do you see it? Yeah, that's what I heard. All right, here we go. So you've got a perfect uh, job for your hands. All right, let me get a local down and I will be ready. And guys, we're uh, almost two hours into the EVA. You guys are doing great. We're uh, about 30 minutes ahead, uh, so no need to rush. Uh, Hopper, if you want, you can assist Ike. Uh, the other option is that you... Can you uh, tighten this adjustable for me? Yep. That would be perfect. So I've got them. I'm bending them to kind of together to get them okay, snug, but it. there's not a way I can bend them to put slack on the adjustable. Uh, so that's, that's just one right there. Yep. Yeah. So if there's something I can do to some slack or add some slack, let me know. Okay, I'm not in a good position here. 
There we go. That's a little bit of slack. Yeah. Guys, uh, Hopper, uh, am I understanding that you're going to work on the vent tool and uh, adapter and extender? On my way. If you pass me that part, I can rep to it. And then that way, once you can release it, and I can get all back. So, Hopper, the first thing you'll want to do is install the cap on the vent tool adapter. It should be a cap and a lanyard. I can do that. Don't give it to me. Okay, got it. Okay, you have it. All right, so I'm going to go over your sticky tether back here, but I think it'll. I don't see any uh, fraud or anything to shake off, so. Not okay. good. You can anyway, but. What were you saying, though? Just telling you I'm going kind of over your safety tether here, but I think, I think we'll be de de conflicted. Okay, so we've got to demate all these pieces, right, to go in the bag? That's affirmative. And we 
also do have to close a QD, and I do have the steps for that so we close it properly. Two hours in today's spacewalk, and the astronauts are finishing up on their first task. These high-definition views coming from a camera on Mike Hopkins' spacesuit. You can see the batteries that were removed and replaced over the last few years. Okay, so move bail forward to the full open position. Bail is forward, full open. The button is up. Aft white band visible. Copy. Then uh, while depressing the detent button, move bail forward to open position with significant force. Seems like it was already full forward. Uh, done. Aft white band visible. Button's up. Depress the detent button and move bail aft. And we got a handover in 20 seconds now. I'm sorry, the bail of that button is up. Forward. We're in a quick handover of the tracking data and relay satellite systems. This is a Mission Control Houston. You've got a live look at the teams that are helping make today's spacewalk happen. They're monitoring all of the systems aboard the International Space Station, which happens 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, this bag is going to be a little bit of a mess until we get things tacked down anyway. Okay. So, yeah, you can. I'm, I'm ready to both pieces, so I've got it now. Okay. I, I've got it tended, so I'll just try and bring it back under oh, control. Oh, better. Yep. Okay, Andy, the um, bail is at lever. Yeah, the bail is at. The button is up. Four white band visible. Copy. And Ike, is the uh, cap installed on the vent tool adapter? One side has a cap on it, yes. Okay, excellent. So you can now tether the vent tool adapter to the bag with an integral hook? And then when you're ready, we can demate the vent tool adapter from the vent tool QDE. And I'm assuming I need to cap both of these, both sides of this? That's affirmative. No fog symmetric seals. Adapter looks good. No fog symmetric seals. Caps going on. Cap. Copy. So next step will be to remove the vent tool from the vent tool uh, extender. Uh, just want to make sure that uh, both pieces are now uh, redded. So once you've removed the vent tool from the vent tool extender, make sure that hopper is also uh, vent, uh, redded to that uh, extender. Yeah, stand by. I'm not redded to it. I do have just my mini workstation to it. Yeah, I'm not going to disconnect it. Okay. You don't, you don't need to be ready to it if uh, you get over here. That definitely helped control it over here. Thank you. Good. All right. All right, Andy. Cap is on the adapter, and the cap is on the vent tool. Male and female are capped, and on the uh, female, the forward white band is visible. It's full test on both. Copy. Now, it's heading to the bag. 
pass me. I'm going to start coming up there. Okay. So that's what I'm going to disconnect. Sit under my tether. Yep. Bye. And I do have a rep to this now. Uh, you, you don't. You can uh, disconnect from all of it because I'm going to have to unwind it from my safety cover. Okay. Let me do that first. You bet. Uh, well, this was a matter. If you, you want to go ahead and disconnect that, I'll unwind it when. And I've got a rep to it. Uh, that side. Okay. So I will un. Okay. Okay. You can unwind that. But I will. Oh, hold on. They're also connected here. They're tethered. Hold on for a second. Okay. Okay, you have control. I have That's control. Right. I've got this half and it's tethered to the bag. Roger that. And I'm unwrapped from your safety tether. Thank you. I'm going to install the plug. All right, Hopper, so I think I saw you install the plug into the vent tool extender. And so just give it a pull test once you've uh, locked the uh, lever. Pull test. Copy. And uh, Ike, um, the vent tool, you can go ahead, if you haven't already, you can use an integral hook from the bag uh, to secure that vent tool. Um. Copy. And then just one go back, just uh, want to make, sh make sure that the booties are covering both uh, QDs on the jumper. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know yet. If they were installed, but they come off really easily. So I'll let you know before I pick this stuff up and start taking it back. Okay, copy. We can do that when uh, we're doing bag inventory. Yeah, much better. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out which strap is best to strap that down with. Yeah, the, the two near the hinge. Uh, yeah. What kind of... Perfect. You. All right, so that piece is in and it's connected to the bag. So that's the next piece to go in. That's, I think that's the only, that's the last piece we got. Uh, the nozzle comes off the muddy defector. Okay. All right. So let's see, I can connect that one to here. And then if you uh, want to keep this, that looking at you. Okay. And then that's the, uh, the kind of mud in defector interface. I'm sorry. Yeah, the mud yeah, defector. Not that one. Not that one. Yeah. Leave that on the bracket and then just take the mud in defector off. Ah, here. See, here. Yep, right there. Okay. So uh, I got to run to the mud in defector. Uh, you can do to the front, the jaws of it. Yeah, that's what I meant. With you. Okay. Yep. And then I'll have the rest of it. Okay. So I'm going to undo it here. Stay firm. So just just be aware if, if if you undo it there, then the mutt needs to be secured separately to the bag. Whereas if you undo the nozzle from the L bracket, there's a lanyard between the nozzle and the L bracket. I was just putting it together, putting it back in the way I took it out. But if you want me to do that, happy to do that. I would leave it all connected, so I didn't have to rip to it. <laughs> What do you want us to do? It's up to you. I was just making a suggestion to, to make it easier, but it's either way is fine. Call like, what do you want? Okay, yeah, disconnect the, uh, the nozzle. They stay connected, so. Yep, they've got this one. We're holding them. And the technique we're both ready to do it, so now okay. we just got to get it in the bag. All right.
Two hours and ten minutes into today's spacewalk, the astronauts are packing the bags after the first task today, which was venting the early ammonia system to jumper cables there specifically. You hear a lot of talk about tools and tethers. At all times, the astronauts themselves are tethered to the International Space Station, and their tools or workstations are tethered to them as well. Following completion of this task, Victor Glover will head toward the airlock where he will place the one of the jumpers vented today outside of the airlock. He will then pick up a new wireless video system external transceiver assembly, then head to remove and replace a failed one. Meanwhile, Mike Hopkins will go to the Columbus module where he will be performing a variety of tasks including connecting some cables on the Bartolomeo science platform. And just a heads up, for the next 10 minutes, we could have ratty calm due, some, due to some blockage. Okay. See if I can get my red out of the way. Okay. Yeah. If we can just stuff it back under that strut. Okay. Is the end effector yeah, can work. can let the cable go. Okay. Now hold or you want a lid? Uh, I will hold first. I used to like quarter turn fasteners. Just not these. Okay, can you uh, pinch the bag shut? Ah. Yeah, that gets fun. We can stuff it out there, but can you just like pinch the lid right there? Yeah. And guys, uh, before you uh, close the bag completely, we'd like uh, an inventory of the bag, please. Couldn't see what was okay. All right, and by me. All right. 
Do you want a WBS or can we just say what we put in there? Yeah, we have a, we're in KU blockage, unfortunately, so we don't see anything. Okay, so the bag has the adapter in it with caps on both ends. I copy. Copy. Okay, then there's the vent tool, which was made from the uh, adapter, and it has a cap on it as well. I copy. Copy. And then the extension piece, it's a plug. It has the uh, French hook with the bracket, and that is demated at the bracket, and the bracket is still on the mud end effector. Okay, we copy all Ike, and uh, as it last, we just uh, have a, if you could just check the booties on the uh, jumper cuties. Yeah, we'll get that here in a sec. Is there actually Velcro right there? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I should have done is put the Velcro down first. Yeah. And for the tip. <laughs> well, you're welcome. Can you do the other side too? <laughs> Both of you. Okay, and you can do the booties. <laughs> Alright, that one's done. Working booties. And whatever it's convenient for you, Ike, we'd uh, appreciate it if you could turn on your uh, WBS. There are all these wire ties down here if you use one of those. I think it's going to be necessary. I didn't either. And Hopper, that looks good for the MLI out there on that uh, first QD. On the jumper. Oh yeah, no, I have a, I have some of my yeah, no, I'll one of these. Okay, yeah. Now, which one? That's the question. That's this one right here. And Ike, whenever it's convenient for you, we'd appreciate it if you'd uh, hit your power button on the WBS. Work. WBS power on. Excellent. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Actually, can you, uh, I think it's better if tighten from that side, pull the two sides together, does that make sense? Uh, I think so. I'm working this one right here. Yeah. Are you saying so, that? Thinking where you are, if you pull and tighten that way, it'll pull the two loose ends together. Yeah. Perfect. That looks like it's doing 
doing anything. Yep. Two hours and 20 minutes into today's spacewalk. This view from Victor Glover's helmet camera. He is EV-1 today, or extravehicular crew member one. The astronauts are still wrapping up their first task, venting two jumpers on the early ammonia system. Coming up next, Victor Glover will head back to the airlock to stow one of those jumpers outside. He'll then work to remove and replace a wireless video system external transceiver assembly. Excellent. Good news. Uh, we'll take a, a glove and hab check. D1 has a dry hat. Change to the gloves. Copy, Ike. D2 dry hat. No change to gloves. Copy. So, Ike, uh, go ahead and check your gauntlets, and then you can grab the vent tool extender bag and head back to the airlock. Just remember to pick up your green hook from 5204, uh, was it? Use my gauntlet to replace it. Get out of your way, Ike. No rush. Hopper, once you have room, then you can uh, grab the crew lock bag, and then you'll be heading outboard to the APFRs. Andy, I've got the bag with the jumpers. Still it's clear, I'm going to get my green hook. Copy. You can head back to the airlock. Copy. Right. All right. Okay. Okay. See ya. Okay. All right. See ya. Good job. Yeah. Victor Glover now heading back to the airlock, the first task being completed. And we've got a few more Ask NASA questions coming in. This one mentioning some major upgrades happening on the space station, but how will that happen without the space shuttle? The shuttle indeed was a Im very important part of building and upgrading the space station. And now we're fortunate to work with commercial providers and uh, Roscosmos who are able to use their vehicles to help deliver upgrades to the space station. Over the last several years, we've upgraded the batteries on the International Space Station, which were delivered by the JAXA, Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, HTV vehicle. We have other cargo delivered by Northrop Grumman, and of course by SpaceX, who will be delivering the new solar arrays on their Cargo Dragon later this year. At some point, we'd appreciate a inventory of crew lock bag. You don't need to open it up. We'll just take whatever you can see through the uh that plexiglass. Okay. All right, so here's what I can see. I've got a camera. 
I've got a uh, bail drive lever attached to, looks like an integral ret. I've got the quick release tool to attach the integral ret. And I've got uh, a trash bag attached to the integral ret. Excellent. That should be it. That should just be an adjustable, large, small on the outside, I think. And that's affirmative. I do have a large, small on the outside. I am ready to it with my BRT ret. Time. Excellent. That's a good config for, for the Kulak bag. You can grab that and then head out to the uh, APFRs. Roger. And yeah, I've got my green hook. It's to the back. Pack is in a good config. Yellow hook is locked. Back on black. Both reels are unlocked. Copy. You have a go to head back to the airlock. No way. And uh, once you get back there, the first thing you'll be doing is stowing that bag up on the zenith portion of the airlock. Okay, I'm heading out. Happy Albert. Okay. I'm gonna keep going past the ATFR and uh yeah Hopper, your, yeah, Hopper, your first task will be to uh, relocate the ingress aid from APFR in WIF 31 to the APFR in WIF 27. Copy. So the first step will be to remove the wire tie. And uh, take a second to see how it's installed, because you'll be installing uh, a wire tie once you've uh, installed the ingress aid on the other APFR. This view from a high definition camera on Mike Hopkins' spacesuit. And clearly in the picture, you can see the APFR, that's the articulating portable foot restraint. That allows the astronauts to secure their footing and gives them some leverage while working outside on a spacewalk. He is moving the ingress aid from one APFR to another for future spacewalk preparations. Meanwhile, NASA astronaut Victor Glover is on his way back to the airlock. He will stow one of the jumper cables that was recently vented. He'll also pick up a new WETA, that's a wireless video system external transceiver assembly. He'll remove and replace one that recently failed. Is Copy. You can uh, read to the ingress aid and then transfer it over to the other APFR.
I'm from Gunnam CMT. Yeah. Well, usually the return trip seems faster, but not this time. <laughs> We have another Ask NASA question, this one from Scott, asking if ground control can see the status of the astronauts' suits or if that's up to the astronauts to monitor. Mission control team here on the ground has constant observation of the suits and uh, are constantly monitoring the consumables, including the oxygen. That helps determine the length of the spacewalk. Black, black on black, good pull, good twist test. Excellent. And uh, you can install a wire tie. Ideally, we'd like a new wire tie. I knew you were going to say that. And I did ask EVA for confirmation. <laughs> That's all right. Hopper and Andy, I'm going down the feet of spur. Roger. Copy. Andy, I'm just putting this bag back in its normal place, right? That's right. The uh, back handrails should be facing port. And I, there's a uh, diagram on page three of your cuff checklist if you want to have a look. Our next Ask NASA question comes from a viewer wanting to know why the spacesuits are white instead of any other color. That's a great question. When the International Space Station is in the sunlight, as you can see now, it can heat up to approximately 250 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So in order to deflect some of that heat, the spacesuits are white. The astronauts also have cooling garments on underneath their spacesuits and can regulate their temperature to help keep them cool. Okay, is Excellent. You can uh, now bundle your Coulard bag to the uh, APFR in WIF 31. Roger that. 
and Ike, uh, that handrail should be pointing port. We'd appreciate it if you could uh, flip the bag 180 degrees. Oh, that's yep. Okay, can work. on my VRT and then go get the other one. That's a firm. You can put that uh, crew lock bag APFR combo on the BRT and then uh, you'll be uh, putting the APFR from WIS 27 into WIS 31. Okay, has a rut. Okay, Andy, the bag is in place for those handrails. Uh, the end of the jumper is over the top. The two ends sit over the top of the vent to the center bag next to it. Maybe you can see it in my WBS. We're happy, Ike. That uh, looks excellent. Thank you. You're happy, I'm happy. Well, next, next, you can open the thermal cover and uh, attach your waist tether to the airlock D-ring extender. Work. Andy, thermal cover is coming open. Copy. The way tether is locked to the airlock. I see one, two, three, four hooks locked, lock on block. That is a good safety tether chain through. 
Air Lock Earring Center. Copy and concur. You and you can uh, retrieve the weather bag from the airlock and temp stow it on the ha airlock handrail 554. And Hopper, you're looking for a clocking of 12. Clocking of 12 is set. And the other setting should still be good. Uh, it's Indigo Indigo Fox 12. Indigo Indigo is set. And I see Fox 12. Need to get my rep back. Give you a good pull and twist test, though. I do see black on black. Good pull, good twist. Copy, and then just a uh, pitch knob check, please. I hear it. Today's spacewalk, now at the 2 hour and 42 minute mark. This view from the camera on Mike Hopkins' spacesuit. He is working with the articulating portable foot restraint. Meanwhile, NASA astronaut Victor Glover is back at the airlock. You can uh, translate back to the airlock. Uh, just a reminder to pick up your green hook from 5223 and uh, check the gauntlets before you get to the Sarge. You can see the colors start to change outside the space station, and that's because the station itself is entering an orbital nighttime. International Space Station is currently flying 260 statute miles over the Arabian Sea. And at 17,500 miles an hour, the station orbits Earth, seeing 16 sunrises and sunsets a day. Currently at the airlock, you can see those red stripes. That's NASA astronaut Victor Glover, today's EV-1 or extravehicular crew member one, preparing for his next task. Copy. Coming up next for Glover, he will be removing and replacing a Weta. That's a wireless video system external transceiver assembly. There are three Wetas that receive video from wireless video systems. 
He will remove the failed one and install a spare, then return to the airlock again to stow the failed hardware. Green Hocus 2, my red reel. Copy. And filter red locked. NASA astronaut Mike Hopkins is currently out of frame, but has recently completed his tasks relocating an ingress aid for the articulating portable foot restraint. Coming up next, he'll be working at the Columbus module on several tasks. He'll be working to connect cables from the Bartolomeo platform. He'll also work to secure some clamps on the platform as well and additionally service a ham radio. Andy, the weather is out on uh, airlock on Enra. Copy. Now, next you can retrieve uh, crew lock bag number one. That's the uh, Bartolomeo Columbus crew lock bag and put it on the airlock uh, handrail or D-ring extender. Hopper, you're uh, stopping at uh, the anchor hook location to retrieve uh, both your anchor hooks. Yeah. Okay, I'm in board of the Sarge. Copy. Copy. Cop Okay, at the anchor hooks. It takes you an EV1 for anchor hooks and putting it in my red wheel. Okay? Yep, that's the firm. And Ike, you're still connected to the uh, airlock waist tether and D ring, right? It's good waist tether to the uh, box waist tether. You have a go proper charge of that. The astronauts are getting up, set up for their next tasks on today's spacewalk, now two hours and 50 minutes long. And we have a question from Mary's 10-year-old who wants to know how big the space station is. That's a great question. The space station is 357 feet if you measured it end to end. So if you put it on top of an American football field, it would be almost the exact same size, including the end zones. Okay, EP1 anchor hook is to my red reel. It's unlocked, still close, side of lock, lock on black, good pull test. Copy. You can retrieve your own anchor hook and stow it on your mini workstation. Okay. 
We have another question, this one from Joe, wondering how many astronauts are in the International Space Station. Right now, there are five astronauts inside and two outside, so in total, seven astronauts are living at the International Space Station. Four of those are NASA astronauts, Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, the two that you see outside today, Shannon Walker and Kate Rubens. We have Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Soichi Noguchi and two Roscosmos cosmonauts, Sergei Rizhikov and Sergei Kutsverchkov. Like large or use? Use what you think that it means. <laughs> Okay, I'm at the port view the cart. And I am off. When you get to the airlock, your bag is on the forward part of the airlock picture right here. Roger that. And Hopper, just a reminder to give a double tap to both port and starboard cedar cart to break release pedals, please. Double tap. Zombie land double tap. <laughs> Nice one, two. Got a double tap. Oh, that got me thinking about Twinkies, like. I was just thinking it'd be a good Twinkie, Mike. Wouldn't that be a good Twinkie? Could be. Which you got any Twinkies sitting anywhere? The master, he's got to engage. We'll search the space station, boys. <laughs> nice. Those are real friends. Okay, I come up to starboard. Coming around. Do a double tap here. And Ike, uh, we'd love for you to take a break and uh, get your met, met rates down a little bit. I am taking a break. to see the spur. And I, uh, while you're resting, we'll take a glove inspection and a hab check. Uh, hooks before I do the APS. Let's see. Okay. Awesome. You. Smudges, cosmetic stuff, no change to the glove, Andy. Copy that. And Hopper, you came in a little bit broken before. Um, next for you, you can put uh, your anchor hook to the aft D ring, uh, and you can then after that put Ike's anchor hook to the forward D-ring on the airlock. Work. And if you want to drop the APFR first, that's also fine. Uh, let's, uh... All right, EB2 has an anchor hook on the lock B ring, bell close, side lock, lock on block, good pull. And 
Hopper, uh, say again, you, your comm dropped off. All right, EB2 Vapor Hook is on the aft airlock B range, doing their bail close side of lock. Left, uh, BB1 is on the forward airlock B, bail close side of lock from Black Big Pull Test. That shows in two big configs. Cop copy and concur. And uh, Ike, you can release uh, yourself from the yeah. airlock D ring. Released. All right, Ike. Well, there's a airlock yeah, D-ring extender, whatever, whatever you prefer. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try and present it to you. That's all right. It's not working very well right now. Okay. Grab this rip off the DRE extender. Okay. Above the HFR there. Hand over in 10 seconds. Okay. Hand over in 10 seconds. I got the. We're in a satellite handover during today's spacewalk. Both astronauts currently at the airlock and preparing for their next task. Need a little bit extra. The first task they completed today was venting two jumpers on the early ammonia system. One of those jumpers was relocated to the exterior of the airlock for potential future use. Now I gotta go with this APFR. Yeah, you're putting it in the WIF X in WIF 11. WIF X in WIF 11. That's a clocking of 12. Yeah, you might want me to let me get out of your way first. That's okay. kind of right. That's the one that's over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let me grab this. You bet. We'll get out of your way. Actually, I got to do something with the rep. A uh, wire tie here. All right, Andy. I mean, uh, I just take the weather and get out of, of Hopper's way. Yep, you can grab the Weta and uh, make room for Hopper if you want. Uh, since you've been in the airlock, we'll just take a safer handles down check, please. Yeah, I've got two good safer handles down. Any sharper? That. Excellent. And I, did I copy earlier that Kulak bag number three is stowed in the airlock? Yes, you do. Copy. Andy, I'm going to get the, uh, thermal cover closed. Copy. Okay, thermal cover is closed. All right, Hopper, I'm getting out of your way. Roger, I see ya. Happy wedding. Thank you. Uh, 
hold on a sec. That's good. What's the matter? Nothing. We're sitting this other APFR. We got a lot of APFRs over here. Yeah, I, that uh, other APFR that uh, Hopper was referencing, that's the one you'll be grabbing to bring up with you to do the Weta R&R. &R. Yeah, I'm over by the Weta. Um, I'm just going to temp still the Weta bag here, and then I'll go back and get the APFR. Copy. Okay, you want a clocking of 12. Yes, please, 12. And then Tango, Tango, Fox, 12. Wow, oh, you're getting picky. All right, clocking at 12, good black on black, good pull, good twist. The weather is ten stowed on the uh on the node one circular hand roll. On node one uh flagging wheel, hand roll. Let's get the APF copy. Okay, Andy, it's uh Lines in the lock position, but it's not quite topped out. But I'm going to call that good for now. We can get going on the other stuff. I can finish that up for you since I'm doing APFR stuff. It's Roger. Roger. Yeah, I'd like to I think that's a good plan. Copy that, Hopper. If you want to, yep, I... if you want to grab crew lock bag number one and then move out of the way, then uh, we'll take a uh, glove inspection and have check from you. Roger that. Like I think if you, it's almost there. Might be able to get this one last little on the pitch knob. And if it's okay with you guys, I'll give you a quick uh, big picture summary. Uh, we are exactly on the timeline. Uh, Hopper, your med medox is a limiting factor at six hours, 22 minutes, but this is uh, in order to give us the opportunity to protect for a uh, ammonia test in the airlock if we decide to do it. We haven't decided to do it yet, but we want to protect for it. And finally, inhibits are in place both for the Papos and Weta work sites. It's been three hours and six minutes since the astronauts switched their suits to internal battery power beginning today's spacewalk. You'll be 
clear once you start moving away. Okay, I am just about ready. And no rush. Both astronauts are at the airlock at the moment, preparing to move to their next work site. For Victor Glover, with the red stripes around the legs of his spacesuit as extravehicular crew member one, he will be removing and replacing a Weta. That's a wireless video system external transceiver assembly. Mike Hopkins will be heading out to the Columbus module where he'll complete a variety of tasks with the Bartolomeo Science platform as well as reconfiguring a ham radio. Hopper, may the Schwartz be with you. <laughs> Is the pitch setting correct? You're just trying to get the knot off? Yep, that's it. Okay. Okay, yep, it's just really ratchety and sticky to the end. It's you good. get another 10 degrees and it pops in and out. It ain't pretty. But it did pop. Yep. Nice. It's locked. It's locked in place. Okay, I'm out of here, Ike. See ya. I'll copy, Andy. Copy all, thanks, Ike. Um, any other settings on this thing, or are we good to go? No, the settings were good. Uh, we are good to go, so you can grab the APFR in WIF 12, and then head up to the airlock WIF 6, where you'll be installing it. Work. And Hopper, you can make your way to the Columbus worksite. Uh, you know it fairly well, so just let me know if you want any details. Let me know if you want any details. That, I think I'm okay, and dropping my green hook right after I get out near TMA-3. That's affirmed. Okay, I'll see you. See you later. Yep. Gas spanner. Copy. And that gas spanner should take you to no two handrail zero three four five where you're dropping your green hook. Didn't work.
Andy I am out with. So you're looking for a clocking of eight in with six. I'm gonna give this thing a tug test because I know the guy that installed it. I think this will work. All right, with six is solid. It's in there. Give me that clocking again, Andy. Clocking of eight. Eight. The solid single black line on the number eight. Copy. Next settings are kilo kilo. Work yet? I'm just confirming. Not yet. Copy that. There's our buddy. Say hi for me. Hi, Andy. It's in clock two eight. All right, clocking of eight, and then it's kilo kilo delta one. Kilo kilo delta one. Hopper, you're looking for handrail 0943 to stow Kulak bag number one on by the Paphos connectors. I got you. I am there. And the Kilo Kilo is locked, the pitch knob is popped out. It's also sticky in the last 20 degrees. Copy. And Ike, did you give it a pull and twist test and a black on black check? Pull and twist test, black, black on black. Excellent, thank you. Friends. All right, Ike, if you can uh, still reach your wetter bag, then you can uh, ingress APFR. Copy. Kilo Delta 1, that APFR ingress aid is extended. It is installed. A good pull test. 
Hold on, I gotta yell a little bit more. I'm a Delta 12. It is Kilo Kilo Delta 1. Good read back. Just a reminder and a warning to avoid contacting that uh, white thermal coating on the weather. This view from Victor Glover's helmet camera. You can see the number 20 in the bottom, denoting that it is on his spacesuit. He's preparing to remove and replace a WETA wireless video system external transceiver assembly. To do so, he'll need to release three fasteners before he's able to remove the failed unit. He'll then replace the new unit, install three fasteners, and then return to the airlock with the failed piece. Meanwhile, Mike Hopkins is at the Columbus module. He'll be looking at some plugs and cables on the Bartolomeo payload platform. During US EVA 69 earlier this year, there was some difficulty connecting some of those cables, so he'll be troubleshooting that today, as well as providing more information about the area. Copy. So you can uh, release. Excellent. So you can release the long wire tie, go into the P1 lever, leave the wire tie attached to the handrail, and then you can demate, inspect, and uh, try to remate the P1J1 connection. That didn't work. Whoever installed these wire ties did a really good job. It looks very pretty. Yeah, kind of a pain. The two plugs you see Hopkins working with right now are plugs one and two in an intermediate configuration as they were left after US EVA 69 in January. You want to be made it. Copy. And we've got excellent uh, heck of views. Okay. I see no fraud. It tends. Good EMI band. On the P1, let me come up. Again, so far, and they are definitely close and tight. Look okay. Okay, got a good soft dog. And 
Uh, no joy. Copy, no joy. So let's uh, go ahead and try with the broom tool to expand those tines. Copy that. And you don't need your PFR. Copy, you can grab your PGT. Uh, the settings are Bravo 1, counterclockwise 2. Copy, I'm going to cal first. The connections for the first cable Mike Hopkins was trying to mate did not fully complete, so they are working through some troubleshooting options as was planned. One, counter two, and you'll be releasing the outer fasteners in any order. It's seven to 13 turns each until the bolt pops out. The outers first, any order, seven to 13. Work. All right, I definitely see the floating around that Ike was talking about. Focusing on the FMG. During the initial spacewalk to work on these connectors, there was uh, reported that the jack socket tines might be more closed in than were initially expected. So Hopkins is using a tool to attempt at expanding those tines. In what way? Picture that. In what way? Uh, it bent it up. I guess when I pulled it out, something caught. So maybe I put a little side load in. Reason of practice. So. And this was on the practice socket F, correct, Fox? That's affirmative. That's affirmative. And both of the outer bolts are released. Copy. So now you can uh, tether to the failed wetter with your mini workstation, Rhett. Work. Andy, can you guys see that? Not really. No? Okay. All right, so I'm going to start with Alpha. It's just going to be a straight in, straight out. Just a second, Hopper. Could could you try to give us a better view if you move your helmet uh, closer to the socket? Yeah. Go ahead. Right there. Yeah, there's a cable in the way, unfortunately. It's kind of sticking right in front of the HECA. Mike Hopkins working to give the teams here on the ground a better view of those plugs. What do you got? Yeah, we've got a, a good view. It's just hard for us to see the damage. So if you could describe it to us, we'd really appreciate it. Okay, again, so we've got the, the tines and the um, part that folds, folds over, so the right, does that make sense to you, the part that folds over at the top? Yep. Okay, so one of those has bent up. Okay, I understand. So as, as, as if it almost kind of grabbed a lip on the broom, and the broom pulled it out. Is that what you mean? Right, right. Or I could have put some side loads into it, side loads into it, that uh, caused it to bend that way as well. 
Let's see, if we went to the um, pen straightener, I think you'd have to be careful about that because it'd be real easy to bend them back. All right, Hopper, uh, stand by. We're just discussing down here. Yeah. In the meantime, Ike, uh, I'm guessing you've uh, read it to the failed wetter, in which case you can release the center fastener 25 to 31 turns. The bolt does not pop out, but the box will be jacked off the uh, back side. I have the wetter in hand, the uh, failed wetter, no bent pins on the uh, stanchion side or the or the, uh, or the plug and jack sides look good. Both sides look good, no fog, and I'm getting ready to put the round scoop on it. Copy all. You can go to get the round scoop and put that um, on the uh, failed letter. Teams on the ground here continue to troubleshoot and provide options for the Columbus uh, Bartolomeo platform outside of Columbus. All right, Hopper, I'm back with you. Um, let's grab the pin straightener and then have you practice on one of the uh, practice sockets to see if you can uh, expand the tines using the pin straightener. Teams in Houston are also working with teams in Oberpfaffenhofen, Germany, the location of the Columbus Control Center, troubleshooting these tasks with the Bartolomeo platform. Hopkins is now going to move on to try a pin straightener tine expansion. This will provide line of sight to the tines while attempting to expand them. Practice on G. Not seeing any noticeable difference. Copy Hopper. And uh, can you see if the tines move when you apply pressure with the uh, pin straightener? movement, then it snaps back. Copy. And the spare wood is out. A good uh, pin so far. Copy, I. And Hopper, if you're uh, if you're comfortable, Hopper, then uh, you can use a pin straightener tool on the uh, actual sockets, Alpha. 
Bravo, Charlie and Delta. Okay, copy that, I will. And just as a comment, um, I commented that they were floating. It looks like the only ones that are really floating in there are E, F, and G. Alpha Bravo, when I just kind of tap on them, they don't move, so they feel solid. And Hopper, that uh, is what we would expect since uh, the practice sockets don't have cables attached to the back, so that's why they're able to float. Please. Copy, Hopper. And uh, Ike, we see you read it to Weta. You can uh, now release the scoop, which I see you've just done. This view from Victor Glover's helmet camera as he works to remove and replace a Weta. Uh, just a reminder that. Uh, when installing the new Weta, we need running torque in order to um, determine the final PGT setting for torquing it down. So just a reminder not to uh, release the PGT trigger until the correct number of turns has reached. If you do release the PGT tr uh, trigger, please uh, report the running torque and the turns to us before you restart the bolt install. And so to start with, Ike, you'll be using uh, Bravo 1, clockwise 2, and driving the primary bolt 23 turns only, and then reporting the max running torque to us. A look on the right of your screen as Victor Glover uses the PGT or the pistol grip tool to install a new Weta, a wireless video system external transceiver assembly. Just don't float as much as E, F, and G. Copy that, Hopper. Uh, we'll take some photos of the sockets now, and then uh, after that, uh, you can try to. Um, Attempt to make P1 to J1. Copy and work. Okay, Andy, 23 turns, max running torque 1 decimal 6. Max started at turn 21. It was 0 until turn 21. Copy. Right, Ike, uh, you can set your PDT to Alpha 1 and leave it in motor um, and then drive the primary bolt to torque, an additional minimum tur turn count of one and a half turns. Okay, so I want to get this failed one in the bag first. I'll call you back when I'm ready for this. Okay. Victor Glover now stowing the failed Weta. He will return that to the airlock.
Randy Field is in the bag. Was that Alpha 1, Counter 2? Good read back. Sorry, Alpha 1, Clockwise 2. Yep, Clockwise 2. Alpha 1, Clockwise 2, the torque, and uh, minimum of how many turns? Minimum one and a half turns. Okay. I didn't have a good stop that. Copy. Andy, five turns, green lights, 2.4 on the torque. Copy. Oh, made it. Over center. Nice. And the crowd goes wild. Good job. Wow. Excellent. Good news. Say touchdown, but you played on the wrong side of the ball. Hey, we get interceptions once in a while. <laughs> Six. Andy, can wow. I take the red off now? Stand by. All right, Ike, that's a good install. You can uh, remove your reds. Okay. And I see... Uh... Bravo 1, clockwise 2, 5 turns, report running torque. Yep, good word. Same procedure as for the uh, center bolt. On the left of your screen, you saw Mike Hopkins successfully mate the first plug to the Bartolomeo Science Platform. They will now move on to the second and look to expand those tines with the tine expansion tool once again. Okay, I copy. Working the wire tie. Okay, P2. Ten, no fog. VMI van. And I just a reminder, five turns only on the outer bolts and then report max running torque, please. Okay, I drove the zenith bolt, five turns zero is the running torque. You want me to do the same on the meter while I'm waiting? Stand by. That was just one bolt. Stand by. So I, we'd like you to continue with the bolt that you were working on, uh, but take the PGT to manual ratcheting mode uh, with a MTL setting of 2.5. Manual ratchet, 2.5. Five. And work. I'm in ratchet clockwise, decimal five set. Now what? Torque. And I hear turning it until it torques out. And Hopper, a small recommendation for you is to lock out the red. Thank 
too. High definition video coming from Mike Hopkins. As he continues work on the Bartolomeo platform, we saw the first cable successfully mated. He's now using the pen straightener tine expansion tool to work on the second plug. Meanwhile, Victor Glover continues removal and replacement of a WETA, a wireless video system external transceiver assembly. I can turn it by hand. And I uh, just a reminder that the bolt is spring loaded, uh, so you might have to push in to get it to to engage properly. Yep, that wasn't it. It was not enough friction to. Okay, I got five turns on it by hand, and then a half a turn, and it popped twice. The manual ratchet. Stand by. We're checking. All right, Ike, let's uh, proceed with the Nader bolt. So uh, PGT and Bravo 1, clockwise 2, five turns only, and please report max running torque. Bravo 1, clockwise 2, five turns only, running torque. Okay. And EVA has just reported that uh, the Zenith bolt is a good install. Thanks. Thank you. We are three hours and 46 minutes since the start of today's spacewalk, and this is the team leading the crew from the ground, the Orbit 2 team in Mission Control Houston. The astronauts first completed venting of the early ammonia system, their first major task of the day. They have since moved on to their second major task for Victor Glover, that is removal and replacement of a wireless video system external transceiver assembly, or WETA. For Mike Hopkins, he is working on the Bartolomeo platform at the Columbus module. All right, let's go for a mate then. The voice you hear speaking with the astronauts is Andy Mogensen, a European Space Agency astronaut. He's relaying the tasks and guidance from the ground to Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover, today's two spacewalkers. Andy, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. I'm not able to get the NTL out of uh, 2.5. High definition view from Mike Hopkins trying to connect that second cable on the Bartolomeo platform. So Ike, if you, if you want to get it out of the 2.5, you can move the uh, uh, collar to counterclockwise and then uh, pull that little piece in and turn it. Yeah, that's 
what I'm trying to do, and I'm not getting it to move out of 2.5. Okay, stand by. Andy, no joy on no joy on P zero two. Copy Hopper, uh, stand by. And Ike, um, could you double check that that uh, you're in ratchet counterclockwise? I tried it in ratchet counterclockwise, ratchet clockwise motor. I I not getting it to move from two point five. Able to see my WBS? Yeah, we're looking. Okay. I didn't do it once and then call you. I've been sitting here trying the whole time. Yeah, we, we understand, and we're uh, just discussing other options. Mike Hopkins continues to use the pin straightener time, time expansion tool. And just ratchet it and let it get right into the, it clicked in. Anyway, it's in 30.5. Going to Bravo, one clockwise, two, five turns and giving you running towards. Good words, and you're going to drive the five turns. Hopper, we see you trying again with the pin straightener tool, and that's fine. Roger. Ninety-five turns zero on the torque. Copy and zero on the torque. I'm going to have the same issue. There's not enough friction to ratchet it, so I can give you. A Turns by hand, or I can turn it with the PGT. Let me know what you want to do. And I will take hand turns until you think you have enough friction. Okay, and then is it, uh, give me the uh, uh, back to ratchet clockwise 2.5. Stand by. That's affirmative, Ike. So back to uh, Ratchet, uh, clockwise, MTL 2.5. You want to do that? <laughs> okay, I'm going to do these hand turns first.
Maybe so it was uh, six and a half turns by hand. Let's see clockwise. Three, five, six. Hopper, if you need about three quarters of a turn and two pops. Copy that, about three quarters of a turn. And Hopper, if you need additional leverage, you can use an adjustable, uh, the hook from an adjustable onto that bale. I'm getting pretty good leverage on it. So, uh, we'll see. Or put the, uh, the strap of the adjustable over the lever. All right, Andy, my PGT is back to nominal 30.5 set. This time it went back, no problem. Excellent. Good news. And that's a good Weta install. Copy. You have a go-to. Powered up. Still that me. Thank you. And that's uh, in work. And next we'll take a bag inventory. The bag has the failed widow with a round scoop on it, and then there's a round scoop on the outside. There are reds to both of those round scoops back to the bag, then there's an adjustable external and a red external. Perfect. So uh, you can egress APFR and stow uh, widow bag on uh, whatever airlock handrail is convenient. Good work. Confirmation of good installation of the new WETA, the Wireless Video System External Transceiver Assembly, installed by Victor Glover. He will take the failed WETA back to the airlock. Meanwhile, Mike Hopkins continues work on the, the Bartolomeo platform connected to the Columbus module. Well, the initial success isn't repeating itself. That's my step. Yep. Already been worth it, though. Got one. All right, Andy, I'll give it one more try. Uh, one more try with what? With the pin straightener? Um, no, I'm going to give it one more try here and then be made it, see if I can't get it final. Okay, no joy. What would you guys like to do next? Hopper, we'd, uh, we'd like to move Giant. on to P4. P4, okay. Um, so I can just leave this disconnected for now? Or do you want it partially? We're going to leave it like this right uh, for now, but before we leave the work site, we need to return it to its initial config. And you just confirmed you don't want the weather in the airlock, you just want to temp stowed while we start on the stickener. Uh, I mean, it's, it's uh, up to you. It has to go back in the airlock at some point, but we also want the APFR moved back into its original location with 12. I'm going to put the weather in the airlock. Good for us. Yeah. 
It's been removed from J04. Copy, Hopper. And uh, I just a question from EVA for you. Did you see any uh, flake uh, fall off from the uh, wetters? Negative. Talking about the white paint, right? That's a firm. Negative. It's nearly four hours since our spacewalkers switched their suits to internal battery power beginning today's spacewalk. We saw the crew members successfully vent two jumpers on the early ammonia system, one of which was relocated to the outside of the airlock. Victor Glover removed and replaced a wireless video system external transceiver assembly and will soon relocate the failed unit to the airlock. Meanwhile, Mike Hopkins has successfully connected one jumper on the Bartolomeo platform, and it continues to work at the platform to troubleshoot the connections. Andy, what does has a uh, large small red into the airlock? I'm back to get the APFR. Actually, you want me to uh, install the cable reel back now? Stand by. Stand by. Uh, I uh, go ahead and uh, retrieve the uh, APFR and restow that in with 12, and then we'll have you working on the airlock stiffener rather than the uh, cable routing. Okay. Okay. Andy, I've got the. The caps off of uh, J04 and T04. Whoever wire tied this uh, one on to T04. Copy. Uh, your go to overboard. Copy. Your go to use a pin straightener to try to expand the tines. I do. And on P04, good tens, no FOD, good EMI van. And let me get a picture where the sun goes down.
Okay, working the pin straightener on J04. Copy. As the crew members continue work outside the space station, we are continuing answering your Ask NASA questions. This one, uh, what purpose does the little mirror on the left hand of the astronaut serve? Great question. That mirror provides astronauts a visual of the front of their suits, and that is where astronauts can access uh, the comms volume and the temperature inside their spacesuits. All of that is written in mirror image, so that way when they view it by the mirror on their wrist, they are able to read and adjust as they desire. And I, you're going to WIF-12 where you got it from, and you're looking for a clocking of six. Copy. That's where it came from, a clock of six. We have another question from Mary's six-year-old who asks uh, how high above the Earth the space station is and where it is over the Earth right now. The space station is currently flying 266 statute miles over the South Atlantic Ocean, coming up on the west coast of Africa. It's quiet, Ike. I was taking in the view, and the ocean is beautiful. That blue is something, isn't it? It is. Okay, Andy, I'm going to take a picture and see what we can do with before J4. Copy. NASA astronaut Mike Hopkins continues attempting connection of the cables to the Bartolomeo platform. All right, Andy. APFR is English 12, clock to six, good. Full and twist test, block on block. Copy. And the, uh, the rest of the settings, Kilo, Kilo, Fox 9. work. And 
Hopper, uh, one technique you might want to try to use is to use two hands. So once you get it uh, over center like it is, put one hand on the back shell and one hand on the lever and push together. Kilo Fox 9 and the ingress 8 is full down, Andy. Copy all. Yeah, the problem with that, Andy, is the BRT is not strong enough. Copy that, Hopper. All right, Hopper, if you think you've uh, exhausted uh, your attempts on the, doing it this way, what you can do is you try to take an adjustable, put both hooks onto the bale, and then pull on the loop. And I can, we'll take a glove inspection and have check from you, please. is dry. Those are in work. Nice, good job. Before we try uh, P2 again. Yep, let's try that same technique on P2. And copy nominal gloves, Ike. Victor Glover reports that his gloves look good and his hap is dry, his helmet absorption pad. He is now preparing to work on the stiffener install for the thermal cover to keep it from blowing open on the airlock. Mike Hopkins has successfully connected another cable on the Bartolomeo platform and will continue to attempt doing the same with the second cable.
Okay, no joy on. Yeah, we see that, Hopper. At, uh, at this time, we suggest moving on to P3J3. And Ike, that looks really good. Uh, good position, good orientation. This view from Victor Glover's helmet camera as he is now holding the thermal cover stiffener. Once installed, this will help keep the thermal cover from blowing open outside the airlock. Get a few extra caps and wire ties. Sure. Teams on the ground continue to work with the European Space Agency in Oberpfaffenhofen, Germany, troubleshooting the tasks at the Bartolomeo payload where Mike Hopkins continues to work on connecting cables. The extra safety is in place for uh, three. Yeah, Hopper, extra safety is in place for P3J3. During venting of the early ammonia system earlier, the first task of the day, there was some suspected ammonia flakes that may have come into contact with the astronauts' suits. However, exposure to the sun has completed a natural bake-out of any of those potential flakes from the previous venting. And I, uh, if you could give us an estimate of the turn count, both uh, what you've done by hand and then also later what you do with the PGT, we'd appreciate it. I did two turns on that first bolt, and I'm just getting to the second turn on the second one. And I kind of wanted to get two points done just for a little stability before I did anything else. So the, yeah. uh, I we, the uh, we agree with our plan. On two. I'm going to alpha two clockwise two. So we'll both six and one turn so far by hand. All bolts should be uh, hand started before you start to drive. I'll start all six. Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. Four. I like that better. P3, good 10, no 5, good EMI band, and working the pin straightener on A03. Copy.
two turns on bolt two. Copy. While well, Victor Glover has moved on to another major task of the day, which is installing the thermal cover sniff stiffener, Mike Hopkins continues work at the Bartolomeo Science Platform. He is using the pin straightener tine expansion tool. He has used this tool and seen success with two of the plugs so far. One four of these bolts so far, so the stiffener is going well. How you doing? Well, I've got two of four. Nice. About to try P three and P three. So I get the right. All right, two turns, both three. Copy. Okay, good stop, Doc. Two, three. Two, three. J3 made it. Yes, over center. Yeah, we saw that. Excellent. Using the same technique as on the fourth plug earlier, Mike Hopkins has successfully connected the third plug to the Bartolomeo platform. If you're game, um, we'd love for you to try the pin straightener again on uh, J2, P2. I am absolutely game.
Mike Hopkins continues to use the pin straightener tine expansion tool to expand some of those tines that were reported initially during EVA 69, US EVA 69, to be a little more closed end than nominal. Of course, power to the power distribution units have been turned off for these troubleshooting procedures. Meanwhile, Victor Glover continues to work on installing a stiffener on the airlock's thermal cover. Copy. Let's do this again and install another thermal cover stiffener. Tubes, they need to be wobbles. Yeah, that makes sense. Getting the uh, thermal cover to line up with that, is that uh, it? Yeah. The first one I was able to obviously get over center. The rest of them I've had to do some tugging, and I'm on the last one. Uh huh. And all that tugging is caught up with me. Yep. Let's take a break and try to get in a second, but it's my drift, Andy. Um, two. Yeah, we copy that, Ike. We're in a quick satellite handover, and uh, we are watching Mike Hawkins attempt to connect a third jumper, or the second jumper by number, we should say, but he's connected three jumpers to the Bartolomeo platform so far. Victor Glover is near the Quest airlock, and he is installing the thermal cover stiffener. We are now four hours and almost 30 minutes into today's spacewalk. Yep. Been in my right eye. Okay. Having trouble seeing? Oh, I can see it. Just irritating. It's uh, trying to keep it open. That's eye is fine. Be watery. Okay. Taking a break. Blinking. Uh, it's watering. Let you know how that's working. Okay. When I open my red eye, it's uh, a little irritated. Completely irritated? Yeah. Okay. Andy, you copying? Yeah, we copy. So, uh, is that 
water irritating your eye, Ike, is that right? Negative. Something, I don't know what. It's, uh, it, it hurts to keep it open. It's irritated if I keep it open. But when I close it, I'm fine. Slightly irritated, and it's watering. You know, tears. It's creating tears. I'm blinking. That's working. But if I try to keep it open, my left eye is fine. And for your information, I did not use anti-fog on my helmet. I didn't use any. All right, we copy you did not use anti-fog, and we copy it's your uh, irritation in the eye that's causing your, your eye to water. It wasn't water in your eye, but something else that's irritating it. That's correct. Only chemical in this uh, EMU is the pipe, the paste on the uh, electrodes. Yeah, I can. Uh, what are you thinking? You want the? I'm good. I'm right at the airlock. I'm good. I'm. I'm still working on this last one. I'll, I'll keep you posted. I'm. Uh, okay. Let you know. And it keeps getting better. Blinking is working. I'll let you know if it doesn't. Okay. No joy. I'm. You too, Jay. Too. Victor Glover reporting some irritation in his eye, but that it improves as he continues to blink. He is at the Quest airlock installing a thermal cover stiffener, and Mike Hopkins continues work on the Bartolomeo platform outside Columbus. You better like? No, uh, same. 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 All right. Sure? No, yep. Still fly, maybe. Super, super. Flight senior, fly nine far. Uh, say marginal VFR. <laughs> Hopper, the only other thing we can suggest is that you use two adjustables uh, so you get kind of an extra long loop, which might give you more leverage. Okay. Roger. How are you doing, 
Mike, looks like you're continuing to work on the uh, stiffener install. I'm going to try, so Doc, this is the one where I actually need 3D vision and it's uh, not helping, but I'm going to try putting the bolt into the into the uh, thermal cover and then see if I can line them up that way, see if I can get the two to meet. Okay with that? This is a view from Mike Hopkins' suit, his high-definition camera, providing a view of the plugs on which he is working on the Bartolomeo platform. One hook to the uh, strap on that adjustable, and then the other end uh, around the handrail, so you're pulling up maybe, just to give you a different direction to pull in. Yeah, yeah, we can try that. Try using an adjustable too. Ah, yeah. We get them aligned. Yeah. Victor Glover continues work outside the Quest airlock on the thermal cover. He's installing some stiffener tubes, hand turning some bolts to get them started and secured. This stiffener will help keep the airlock thermal cover from blowing open.
Andy. Yep, go ahead. In the uh, aging bag, there is uh, a long pokey thing. I use that to go through the stiffener and into the tube if I can get them aligned. Stand by. Even the thing that Hopper has. Yeah, the broom and a rotation tool. Ike, you are go uh, to use that tool uh, from the staging bag. You think that'll help? All right. work. All right. Still no joy, Andy. How much more you guys want to give this one? Give it one more. Uh, just a second, Hopper. All right, Hopper. Let's uh, try to do the plug extender eval, uh, just so we get an idea of what might be wrong, and then after that, we'll probably just plug it. Yeah, it goes uh, to hard stuff. Copy to hard stop. Yeah. So yeah, my band looks good. Yeah, we copy Hopper. Um, that's a good eval. Uh, we're ready to have you just cap them. So you'll want to grab the uh, 25L cap. That's the one with the cap on tape on it. Okay, so you don't want to uh, you don't want to leave it connected with the wire tie like we did last time. No, we prefer to have them capped.
Franco. Hey, Hopper, we appreciate all that uh, extra effort, but I think we're ready to, to move on. So you have a go to cap the two ends. And uh, Hopper, we'd appreciate you taking uh, pictures of the uh, connectors uh, prior to capping them. Get one right now. How far I was able to go. Mike Hopkins was able to successfully connect three of the four plugs that he was working with today. The European Space Agency and NASA teams have agreed that Hopkins will take pictures of the area and then cap the plug and the jumper. I got it. Use that tool? Yep. This view of Victor Glover outside the Quest airlock as he continues installing a stiffener on the thermal cover. Let's call that three turns on the uh, one that's left. Copy. Two clockwise, two to torque, right? And uh, I will take a pull test on each hand started bolt prior to driving with the PGT. A pull test, okay. Can I just do it right before I drive each one, or do I have to go around all six and pull? Just uh, right before you drive each one, it's just to make sure they're not cross-threaded. Uh, okay. Okay, Andy, you said a 25L, right? That's right. That's the one with the tape on it. Yeah. That mounted easy. Over center. Copy. And then just a straight 25 on the plug. Andy, a good pull test on both five. Copy. And then it's Alpha 2, Clockwise 2. Four turns. Green light, 3.8 on the torque. Copy. Had a good pull test on 4 as well. Turns green light three point six on the torque. Stand by, Ike. All right, you can continue. It's uh, fewer turns than we were expecting, so we might have to come back. But uh, go, your go to proceed. Okay. 
Okay, Andy. You want to inventory while light continues? Yeah, that'd be great. Light turns on three. In light, 3.7 on the torque. All right, I'll just stop talking when hike starts. Okay, so I got an integral with a trash bag. Inside that trash bag is one, oh, let's see, I need more wire ties. I need to take, you want me to take these other two long wire ties off those 943? Yes, please. Okay, stand by then for the inventory. And Ike, what was your report on the last bolt? I think we missed it. One and a half turns, green lights, uh, I think it's 3.7 on the torque. Ike, uh, it's a little bit hard to read. Was it two and a half turns or ten and a half turns? Four, quattro, four and a half turns. Copy, four and a half. This view from Victor Glover's helmet camera as he continues using the pistol grip tool to install the airlock stiffener. Green light. I hit the trigger again. I lost the torque. Hit it again. Three point six on the torque. And what was the number of turns? Three and a half turns. Copy, three and a half turns. Full test on one. Copy, Ike. This is a high definition camera view from Mike Hopkins' suit, and the small tool you see him holding is actually his trash bag. Three and a half turns on one green light, 3.6 on the torque. Hopkins is still at the Columbus module, specifically near the Bartolomeo payload. You can see the connectors behind him. He was able to connect three of the four we were looking at today. The third one in the middle is capped. The European Space Agency teams will evaluate a future course of action. Turns on six. Green light, 3.6 on the torque. Copy, three turns on six. All right, I give a, give us a second to discuss turn counts. But all the seconds you need. It would be strange to me if they were out of family, but uh, given that they all match. Close. Go ahead and discuss. 
Yeah, we concur. We're still just uh, double checking to make sure because it's a lot less than the 11 turns we were expecting. Um, in the meantime, uh, how's your right eye doing? Just back to normal. Excellent, back to normal. And uh, if you want to give us a glove check and hab check, we'd appreciate that. Hab is dry. Let's have a couple new black spots. Other changes. Copy. Here's a fix. Victor Glover here in the center of your screen at the Quest airlock working on installing a thermal cover stiffener, reporting that his eye is back to normal after earlier mentioning that it was slightly irritated. We'll check here. Sure, we'll take that as well. Okay, so on my left thumb, you probably see a little bit of red. You guys got that? Yep, we see that. Okay. More. It's just the RTD on that right index finger. A bit of RTD on my right thumb. Check the outside. Well, now they look good, dry half. Copy. Okay. Drag inventory. So I'm gonna have to do this again after we do the ham radio. Uh, just a second, Hopper. I think uh, EVA would like a little bit more detail on the thread that uh, that you showed us earlier on the camera that was sticking out of your, was it your left thumb or left index finger? finger? Yeah, what about the thread? It's a little bit of thread on my left, my left thumb. It's uh, sticking up right next to the RTV along that thing. All right, Hopper, we're just uh, double checking with the mirror, but uh, as long as it's from the seam, we think it's okay. Okay, copy that. It looks like it is in that area. Hey, on this inventory, am I going to have to do it again if uh, when I open this bag for the ham radio? Good call. We can skip the inventory now, and we'll go to the uh, ham radio worksite. And Hopper, we're happy with the gloves. Okay, good. Thank you. Just over five hours since today's spacewalk began at 7.14 a.m. Central Time, 8.14 a.m. Eastern Time. So far today, the crew members have vented two of the jumpers on the early ammonia system and relocated one of those jumper cables to the outside of the airlock for potential future use. Victor Glover removed and replaced a wireless video system external transceiver assembly. Meanwhile, Mike Hopkins successfully connected three jumpers on the Bartolomeo platform and capped one other. The thermal cover is flush with the stiffener and also that each bolt head is flush with the, with the tube or receptacle. Victor Glover continues work on the thermal cover stiffener, initially planned to be a two-person task, however, to allow Mike Hopkins more time at the Bartolomeo payload.
platform. He has continued this work. A good view from Victor Glover's helmet camera of the thermal cover where you can see underneath he has installed this stiffener. This will help keep the thermal cover from blowing open, doing something what the team calls potato chipping. They're all flush, the stiffener to the thermal cover. And it's like a there's like a metallic or composite plate between the stiffener and the fabric of the thermal cover. And uh, the bolt heads are flush. And there's a stock washer. I mean, there's the bracket, the lanyards too, and then a, bra uh, a washer on top and three washers underneath. So there's it's all flush. There are no gaps in any of it, and none of it is uh, is uh, crooked. It's all flush. Stand by, Ike. All right, Ike, uh, we'd like to try one final thing. So on one of the bolts, either bolt five or bolt six, which are the two bolts uh, at the closest to the hinge, if you could try to uh, install one of those bolts with a PTC setting of alpha three clockwise two, alpha three. Okay, I'll try uh, a Nexus six, alpha three clockwise two. Andy, one last uh, take a look at the work site here. All right, you're go to translate to the APCU panel uh, on the other end of Columbus. Okay, copy that. Heading that way. And just for your awareness, Hopper, uh, the ASIN payload has had a good power up. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you. And so we and we confirmed it was Alpha Three Clockwise Two. That's affirmed. Alpha Three Clockwise Two. Got a quarter of a turn on both six. Alpha Three Clockwise Two. An additional quarter turn. Turn green light five point zero on the torque. Stand by. You think there's a fifth of a turn? All 
All right, Ike, we appreciate that extra effort. We're going to say that this is a good install, and we're done with this task. I concur. Mike Hopkins given some good news that the power checkouts for the Bartolomeo platform and the three of four jumpers he was able to connect today went well. Victor Glover just being informed that uh, the thermal cover stiffener task is deemed complete. Mike Hopkins, the view here from his spacesuit and the high definition camera is now on his way to work on the ham radio reconfiguration. Coax and sensitive to bending loads. Okay, I copy that. Thank you. I am at the work site. All right, if you need to, you can stow your crew lock bag, and otherwise you'll be working to demate the antenna P2 from the APCU J2. Roger that. I am going to stow this crew lock bag. Five hours and 10 minutes into today's spacewalk, you just got a glimpse of Earth, specifically the South Pacific Ocean from Victor Glover's helmet camera. International Space Station flying 266 statute miles above us all. You have a go to D-mate P02 from J02. Mike Hopkins has now begun the ham radio reconfiguration task. He will demate two plugs. BMI band. On both sides. Copy. You can now demate the Eris P02 from the antenna J02. Andy may have to uh, uninstall both one on this stiffener. The, the red is between the fabric and the plate. The hook itself, it's, yeah, if you can see it in WBS, if you do, you'll see it then for me to describe what's going on, but I can't get it off. Yeah, we see that. Uninstall one. Give me enough room to get out of there. 
And uh, I know what you're thinking. That's not the reason they didn't go to torque. That is a long way from 11 turns. It's going to be the same amount of turns when we reinstall it. Yeah, we in the other bolts either. We agree, and uh, we're good with your plan to release one of the bolts. Yes, give me a settings, please. Alpha two, counter two. The Alpha two, counter two. Alpha two, counterclockwise two six. One. Okay, J zero two. And the antenna, they are demated. No far to ten to the MIBM. Copy. In just a second. All right, Hopper, uh, if you can grab the camera and take pictures of the ARIS P02, the antenna P02, the antenna J02, and the APCU J02, we'd appreciate it. Cool. Work. Indeed, the bolt uh, came apart, hung out, and the washers have uh, separated. They kind of went all directions, and the bolt went straight. Yeah, we see that. There's a washer right at the top of your help, uh, camera view. Now it's out of the view. I think the bolt, I can see it going straight, Nader. Bolt going straight, Nader. All right, Ike, no issue. Uh, we're still good with the number of bolts installed, so uh, if you can free the, the, the RETs, then uh, we'll still call this task complete. In work. Sorry about that. No, no, that's uh, not your fault. The bolt shouldn't have come apart. No, I can get another bolt like that, I'll install it, and the red is released. Copy. Hey, Kate, Shannon, or Salichi you can run to the store real quick. Yeah. Okay, no bolt in there, but it's back, uh, the thermal cover over the tube, and I had to use that, uh, this, uh, I don't know what the heck this thing is called, long bulky thing I got out of the uh, safety device. Uh, yeah, I think we call that the probe. The probe. There you go. I had to use the probe. Works like a champ. Ike, we're just talking about that uh, lanyard with uh, a washer on it that's still attached if we need to do something about it. Copy. Yep. What you talking about?
while you're talking, can I go put this uh, probe back in the machine bay? Yeah, you can put the probe back in the staging bag. Okay, Andy, photos are complete. Excellent, good news. So now you can mate the ARIS P02 to the APCU panel J02. Okay, so the ARIS P02, I don't see a label on it, but it's definitely the... Yeah, it's it's the cable with the only one cable. end. That's right. The other has a Y, right. the, the Y end, and that you cap both right. of the Ys. Okay. And Hopper, if uh, you need further confirmation on the ARIS cable that you're mating, there should be a label that says HMU-895. Yeah, I've got the right cable. I mean, the other one's the Y. So. Yeah, exactly. I figured that was a better description. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, I'm soft back. Over center. Copy. So next you can grab two of the uh, size 25 caps from the crew lock bag and uh, cap the ends of the Y cable. Okay. And those, um, oh, I've got a, uh, Integral rep that's going to an adjustable that's attached to a wire tie caddy. Like it's got three smalls and six longs, and then that's also attached to a connector cleaner tool. Copy hopper. So we adjustable. we just had a handover. So I got a, an integral rep with an adjustable to a connector cleaner and a wire tie caddy. Yep, that's the first part. And I've got an integral rep. Do a GoPro, and then I've got the uh, camera that's attached to its own rep. That's one side of the bag, so I'm going to close that side up. That's all right.
flag on E02. This high definition video coming from the spacesuit of Mike Hop Mike Hopkins, today's EV2 or spacewalker number two. He is working to reconfigure the ham radio. Andy, what size uh, size on the HMU 601? It's just a standard 25. No hook, no tape on them. Okay. No tape Okay, two plugs are installed. Copy. And you ready for an inventory on this side? I am. Okay, there's an integral. That's got a trash bag. There's three wire ties in that trash bag. There's a red small small, the broom tool, a red small small to the pen straightener, and an integral red to the cap caddy. Now one, two, three, four, five. Five caps on it. And then on the outside you've got the large small adjustable. Excellent. That's a good bag inventory. You can uh, put that on your uh, BRT, and um, I think at this point we'll take a, a quick discussion with you about the forward tasks. Okay. And one additional thing for you, Hopper, we'd uh, like the uh, ends of those of that uh, Y cable restrained with a wire tie to a handrail, please. Yeah, that makes sense. The only other thing I want to talk to you about, I don't know if you can see you know, the bend radius of this uh, earth antenna cable coming in. Are you able to see that in the HECA? Are you guys happy with that? Yeah, we see it, Hopper. Just a second. All right, uh, once you've closed the crew lock bag, let's uh, get you uh, working on tying off the end of the uh, Bartolomeo cable. Okay. And then uh, if we need to do anything about that uh, bend radius, we'll let you know. Okay. So Ike, it looks like you already have the CP8 and CP9 cable reel bags outside the airlock, is that right? All right. Well, you read our minds. Um, what we suggest going forward, we're about five and a half hours PET, so we suggest um, not doing the Bartolomeo cable clamps, but then getting both of you working on the uh, CP9 and CP8 cable routing. So, Ike, you'll be working CP9, and uh, Hopper, you'll be working CP8 if you agree. Well, maybe. Super. Excellent. Uh, looking at the time, there's a good chance we won't finish the CP8 cable routing, and so we'll likely have to tie down the bag somewhere along the way. Roger.
All right, Ike, so you can go ahead and get started with CP9, and uh, we'll need you to take the Nader path below lab uh, over to the uh, rat's nest port side. All right, we'll do. As Mike Hopkins continues reconfiguring the ham radio outside the space station, Victor Glover is going to begin some cable routing procedures scheduled for the spacewalk. We are now almost five and a half hours since the spacewalkers turned their suits onto internal battery power this morning. Down. Excellent. You can uh, retrieve the crew log bag, put it in your BRT, grab your green hook, and head back to the airlock. That's that didn't work. We're happy with that bend radius. Stand by. Yeah, we're happy. There's not much we can do about it in any case. So go ahead and uh, stow the crew lock bag in your BRT, grab your green hook, and head back to the airlock. Roger. All right, Andy, I've got the uh, CP9. Go back B. And I'm starting my translation to the lab. Copy. And once you get to the um, port side of the lab, you're looking for handrail 285 for your green hook. I'll put your reel bag on the uh, airlock circular handrail. Oh, I thought you were going to take it out for me. I like it. No, I'm kidding. A recap at the progress throughout today's spacewalk so far. The spacewalk began at 7.14 a.m. Central Time, 8.14 a.m. Eastern Time, putting us now at over five and a half hours of this spacewalk. The crew members first vented two jumpers on the early ammonia system and relocated one jumper cable to the outside of the airlock. Copy. Glover removed and replaced a wireless video system external transceiver assembly, which has recently received a successful checkout. Mike Hopkins successfully connected three jumpers on the Bartolomeo platform and capped one other. This leaves Bartolomeo in a mostly operational state with power checkouts good on those cords. Victor Glover recently installed the thermal cover stiffener while Mike Hopkins worked to reconfigure the ham radio. As he continues to work on this task, Victor Glover is getting ahead with some cable routing tasks planned for this spacewalk. And both are unlocked. Copy, uh, Hopper, stand by for, for just a second before you leave the work site.
And I, I think, Mike, I think you need to go lab forward. This is the handrail route. You can see another way to get there and then get across this gap of handrails. This, that spanner, that's the one I was looking for. Yep, it looks right. It looks, looks like you're on the right track. I... I'm looking at 285 now, getting ready to drop my green hook. Copy. Yeah, this is where I was going. Thank you, Andy. Yeah, I'm, I apologize, Hopper. We're discussing how much PET we actually have. Um, give us a few minutes, because there's no point in getting you started on CP8 if we only have, say, half an hour. Then we might as well do the Columbus or the Bartomeo clamps. Okay, copy. Green hook at 285. Copy. You can translate aft on ESP1 to the lab and cone, and then on the port lab struck. Okay, All right, Hopper, we've uh, made a decision. We do have enough time to go to a PET of 6.45, so we'll get you headed back to the airlock and start working on CP8. Okay. Moving out. Andy, I can see the C2 V2 cable. All right, so uh, you're then looking for the uh, spider cable W4300. And once you find that uh, spider cable, you'll be pulling out the P8 from your cable reel bag with about 10 feet of slack, and then mating it uh, to um, J8 on the spider cable. Okay. One thing at a time. See the number for that, uh, is it with P4300? Say again? Well, that I'm looking for is this 4300, zero, zero, zero. That's correct. Okay, found it. So you'll uh, demate the cap from P8 on the in the cable reel bag, and also demate the cap from the J8 on the spider cable. P8 and J8. Okay, it work. All right, from the bag at about 10 feet. And just a reminder that the cable goes on the forward side of the inner board most strut. So forward of the C2V2 cables. Thank you for that reminder. Hey, right, Jeff, I'm on the Cedar Spur. Happy.
Actually, Andy, I'm going to stay where I'm at, so that's a good position, but I'm going to put the bag on the other side. That's what I remind you again. Copy. And Hopper, you can just temp stow the uh, crew lock bag on the outside uh, of the airlock and then grab CP8 wheel bag. Roger, and work. And before you leave the airlock, we'll take a glove inspection and half check, please. Roger. Getting a look at what the cable routing procedures look like for the CP8 and CP9 cables. Victor Glover has now started this task. He will retrieve one of these cable bags and begin routing it. Eventually, once connected, these will provide a Wi-Fi hotspot. Andy, I've got about 10 feet of cable out. Cap is coming off. Copy, cap's coming off. Sensor. Cap is removed, good pin, BDMI band. Copy. I'm looking for which one to mate it to. P8 to J8. J8 is on the uh, spider cable Whiskey 4300. Okay, I found it. An adjustable hook on that cap. While we wait to regain video, you still have audio with the astronauts. Uh, no change to the glove since the last report. Copy. And uh, no change to gloves. Excellent. Uh, you can grab the CP8 cable reel bag and then translate port to the uh, rat's nest. And if you need uh, fair lead hand reels, I've got them for you. After that, on my way. The voices you currently hear are of astronaut Victor Glover. You may hear him referred to as Ike. That is his call sign, or sort of a nickname given to him by his crewmates. I don't see any of my band on this side, but we'll follow Copy, and uh, just double check that you're not trapping your safety tether when you're mating these two. Tether when you're mating these two. I will verify that. Speaking with the astronauts here in Mission Control Houston, you have Andy Mogensen, European Space Agency astronaut. That's a firm. Right. That's right. Up the CETA spur uh, and then the Zenith. Up the Victor Glover has started on the CP9, that's camera port 9, cable routing task. Once you get over to that wedge face, we uh, suggest putting in a fair lead on 3437 and 3459. 3437, I'm there. All right, Andy, Glover is forward over center. JAP8 made it. Together, cup. 
copy that so you can begin uh, your translation uh, port and where possible use existing wire ties to secure the cable to handrails. And just a caution to avoid contact with the targe radiator beam once you get there. Glover confirms he has connected plug eight with jumper eight. And uh, I just want to confirm, just a second. All right, Ike, uh, again, just double check that uh, the cable is routed on the forward side of the inboard most strut. In the WVS? No, we don't have KU right now. Okay. Going directly from the, the spider cable to uh, on that handrail. Uh, three five two one. So it's not going around any any of the stanchions. And it's forward of what I see as the inboard most stanchion, like the C2V2 cable. That sounds good to us. And I, uh, I've got handrail suggestions for wire ties, but it's up to you. Uh, if you decide to do uh, it on your own, just let us know which handrails you use. Okay, yep, I got it. On the outboard most strut where the C2V2 cable goes outboard, there is a uh, wire tie, so I'm just going to put one there just to keep it going the right direction. It'll be Copy. taking some flash. After reporting a good configuration, Victor Glover has now begun routing the CP9 cable. Andy, continuing outboard. Copy. I'm going to skip 3543 just because I wiretied right at the uh, that top of that strut, like I mentioned. I'm looking for 3621, the next available wire tie. Copy, that's perfect. Yep, that's uh, along the C2V2 cable route, and hopefully there should be wire ties for you to use all along that path. Okay, Andy, I'm here. All right, so uh, you can pull P7 connector from your cable reel bag uh, with about 10 feet of slack, and you want to route that um, forward on uh, forward of the inboard most strut. So basically, same route that uh, Ike routed his cable. After that, I see his cable. Right, Andy, my next one is 3620. This one's got a short wire tie. Power goes here. Do I need to put three twists in or one or what do you need? No, no, no need for three twists. Three is not going to have any left for hot work. No, no, no need for three twists. Thanks, Ike. If you use 3620, yeah, no problem.
and Hopper, uh, you can demate the cap from P7, and then you're looking for J7 on the spider cable, Whiskey 4300. All right, so you're going to have to give that to me again. I'm not quite ready for it. Sure, no problem. Okay, and Andy, I'm moving to the I'm moving to the forward uh, handrail pass. Yeah, we copy. I'm looking for three six three seven. With the completion of the ham radio reconfiguration, Mike Hopkins is now joining Victor Glover in cable routing. Running right over the top of PMM. Okay. Yeah. Why isn't my wheel or my not turning very easy? Suggestions, Andy? Yeah, we see that. You're having trouble pulling the cable out of the wheel bag, right? Yeah, it's tightening up. All right, uh, Hopper, I've got some crib sheet steps for you. Uh, so first of all, you can pull black tab on the MLI flap to uh, open the bag more fully. Pull the black tab. Okay. That's complete. And then verify. Not the MLI. It's just it's tightening up. It's not turning. I bet it's. Stand by, Hopper. That's it. So, Hopper, you might want to look for a tape that says uh, remove before EVA. That might be preventing it. It should be sort of, if you look inside the where the opening is along the edges, Is this the only opening, or is there? Now that tape would be inside the opening. The next thing you can do is check if the cable is caught between the reel and the housing.
Looked like there were multiple openings on this bag, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't see any cable that's caught between the reel and the housing. Hey, Oliver, we're uh, going to need a few more seconds to talk about this on the ground, see if we have any more ideas. Victor Glover continues routing the CP9 cable. Ah, uh, there we go, excellent. It says remove before EVA. Ah, there we go, excellent. I thought those things were supposed to be red. Yeah, no kidding. Mike Hopkins dealing with the snag in the CP8 cable and may have located the source. Currently five hours and 55 minutes since the start of this morning's spacewalk. And the hopper, you might want to try to tuck that into one of the side pockets. Yes. Behind the wire tie caddy or something. Okay, Andy, I'm at 30. Yep, yep, got it. I'm at 3687 at the base of uh, CP9. Uh, say again, sorry, Ike. I'm at handrail 3687 at the base of CP9. Copy that. Excellent. So you can reel out excess cable uh, so you get the other connector out, and then um, you'll be removing the connector from the cable reel bag and routing it to uh, 3687 where you are. And then you can loop the excess or the slack, and you can, can uh, tie down or secure the slack between 3687 and 3688, which should be uh, forward of where uh, you are. It should be. Yeah, And Andy, do you need it to be touching both of those handrails, or do you just want me to uh, stow it in that vicinity? Stand by. Yeah, that works a little easier, Andy. <laughs> That's good news. And I, uh, you can just loop it around that one handrail 3687. The important, important thing is to make sure that the targe rotation plane is clear so that it can't catch on that. Okay, we can talk about that in a second before I secure it down. All right, Andy, which one of these am I going for? You are going to Juliet 7 on the spider cable. Juliet 7. Yeah, the labels are just past the connector on the, on the wire. Yeah, we're not in an awesome location. And 
And there should be a cap on there that you'll need to remove. 4300. It has three connectors right there? Yeah. So one of them is uh, the one I connected? Right. And then the, if you follow the connector past the metal back shell, about within six inches of the back of the back shell, along the cable, there's a P something label tied to it. That's uh, on the other side. Yes, it's not in an awesome location. All right. And there's a wire tie right on top of it. P7P7, Sally Ho. All right, and just a reminder before you make the connection, double check your safety tether doesn't get trapped. Roger. And again, also just double check that you're routing it forward of the uh, inner board most strut. Is forward. Today's spacewalk now at a total time of six hours. Both crew members are working on cable routing, and once connected, these cables will provide a Wi-Fi hotspot. That connection won't take place today. This is simply routing those cables in pre preparation for future spacewalks. Titan, so far, good times to be in my van. Copy. Go to mate P7 to J7. Made it. 7J7. Okay, Andy, let me tell you what I'm doing with this cable, with the uh, free end. Go ahead. You ready? There's one twist around the uh, the cable, that handrail, three, six, eight, seven, I think it was. Then I'm going to take the bundle and put it under one twist. That way when they release this bundle, there's still one twist holding the base of it to the inboard stanchion of this handrail. Copy, good plan. In the charge rotation plane, I'm actually facing the loop forward, so I think the charge rotation plane is aft. It's still curled up right at the base of the VSS, VS, whatever the extension is called, right at the base of it, and uh, just over the handrail. I don't think the charge rotation plane is an issue. You can see my WBS there. That looks excellent to us, Ike. All right, 
I was just shooting for average. What's going on, sir? Good. I got your first. It's your first wire tie. About to beat you now. And that was actually one that was on your path. So nice that I used it as well. I was supposed to go to 3621. And then the handrail split and I went forward, so you'll be on that. You're just going a straight shot. Roger. So should I wait out here, Andy? Am I gonna, is it a conflict for me to, what do you want me to do now? Ike, we'd like you to uh, reclock the CP9 sunshade to align it with the camera body. And uh, just a caution not to translate or maneuver on the CP9 ORU due to the expansion load limits. Say that last part again. You don't want me to translate what? Uh, don't translate on the CP9 ORU. Okay, but the extension, I can go on the BS, the BSSA extension. Um, I might yeah. be able to reach it from the racetrack, but I might have to go to the uh, false interface. Yeah, that's fine. The two lower bolts. Okay. I'll go slow and I'll try not to put loads into it. And it wants to be crooked, either a little under or a little over to get square. You're getting a look inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Flight controllers all monitoring the systems and the suits and the astronauts aboard the International Space Station during today's spacewalk. All right, Andy, that's about as square as I can get it. Can you see? Well, we don't have KU just at this moment. Okay, well then it's perfect. <laughs> we, we wouldn't imagine anything else. Okay, just so you know where I am, 3620 of the handrail. All right. I do it. All right, guys, I think. I have the gas in the handrails, right? So I think uh, handrail 3620 is a good place to tie down the CP8 cable reel bag, and uh, that's what we would suggest that you do. So we'll get it tied down uh, nice and tight, and then we can head back to the airlock. Okay, 3620 is a short handrail. You want Give me two copies. Um... 
prefer it on a longer handrail? Uh, it's probably easier if you tie down between the two rows of handrails. So there's the uh, the aft row and the forward row. That, uh, that would be our suggestion. Roger. Okay. Copy that. And just a reminder to push the bag opening up against structure. Make sure I didn't get your safety tether. Oh, yeah, you did. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, put your right leg back. It's clear now. Oh. It's the other way. Okay. Yep. All right. Excellent. Today's spacewalk has now been going for ten, six hours and ten minutes. The second set of hands is going to be greatly appreciated here. Give you what I got left. Ain't a whole lot. The astronauts are routing the CP8 and CP9 cables. Victor Glover's cable has been routed to the desired location. There's two adjustables right on there. One cable routing will end a little early for Mike Hopkins, and they are tying the bag down outside where it can remain indefinitely. However, both of these will be accessed on future spacewalks and eventually connected to provide a Wi-Fi hotspot. You want to come check? I've got you all. Okay, yeah, I think you're right. right. They want the door. Uh, okay, and I've got room to cinch my side over here. Okay, hold on. Got to get the extra cable. Well, oh, actually, you know what? This is just connected to the bag loop and then a rest. Oh, yeah, that bag loop. Okay, there we go. It'll tighten down on the bag. Yeah. All right, we're back from you, uh, with you from after a longer than expected handover. Uh, just a reminder to bring back to the airlock the two uh, wire tie caddies and any additional uh, rets and adjustables that aren't used to tie it down. Oh, okay. So we're going to, all right. And remember, you put a piece of uh, tape behind one of the wire tie caddies. Yeah. All right, let's see here. And if it helps, you can put the uh, wire tie caddies and other pieces of equipment in Ike's bag or on Ike's bag. That's what I was thinking. I can get the... Yeah. All right, I'm gonna remove one sign. Unadjustable. Okay. Well, let's see. So just remember the hook goes through both the bag and the um, wire tie caddy loop. Roger. Okay. So I don't think that uh, yeah, wire tie caddy is, is uh, tethered now. It's uh, tethered now. That is. Let's tether it on the other, the other side. So you you want me to use this tether to tether it to this side? Uh, yeah, if you can. Do you have enough to tie it down? I've got uh, yeah, I've got one right now to tie it down. Okay, so this tether that's on both of these, 
I'm going to take both of them on this adjustable that's on my side. Okay. I'm going to connect to it now. Okay. So if you have any other connections to the, the wire tie caddies on your side, you can release them. Okay. No, I'm not these. Uh, let's see. I do have one. You, you don't have this one. Though. No, 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 this side. This, yeah, the side facing me, I've got. Yeah. So these two will leave connected and take them off with that. All right, so can you just confirm right here that this wire tie caddy has got a vet on this side and you see on point? Oh, I can't. Just please give me a second. Okay. Andy, there's a large small here that I think we want to take in too. Is that correct? To leave it. Okay, hold on, please. Yep. So everything comes back inside except for the two adjustables that are used to tie down the bag. Okay. okay. So I've got an adjustable in each wire tie caddy. Okay. So you can release everything else to the wire tie caddy. Roger that. Okay, I've got the one on this side. This one's released. Pick it up. Yeah. Let it go once it's out. There's the tape. Nice catch. Got it. Bag tied down. Okay, I've got a rep to the bag. I'm going to, let's see, where's the opening? Need the opening going up. I'm still ready. I can take this off. I'm going to pass it through the handle. You want it like this, Chris? Yeah, and uh, just to confirm, we'd like the uh, large, small adjustable to come inside, so please use two small, small adjustables. Roger. Okay, Ike. Um, I'll turn to put these wire tie caddies in the bag. Roger. as it seemed in my head. NASA astronauts Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover outside on today's spacewalk working to tie down the CP-8, that's camera port 8 cable bag. That cable was partially routed in addition to the fully routed CP-9 cable. This is the last major task for the astronauts today. Andy, I got a small, small. It's coming off the CPA bag. Going on my NWF. I heard you. Roger. Oh, 
large, small. It's also coming off CP8 and going on my MWS. That's a RET. Okay. What we can see looks good. Hopper, you can remove your RET to the bag if you want, and then you can cinch it down the adjustables. Roger. I have room to cinch on this side, too. Okay, let me get my RET off. I tightened it up too much. My RET. Okay, I'm ready. Want to cinch? Yep. Okay. Great. That's snug. That's nice. That's nice. I agree. Looks good. This ain't going nowhere. That's bad. Uh, Excellent. And if there's any loops of cable, uh, we just want to make sure that they're also secured so that they're not interfering with the TARS rotation. I've got uh, one loop on this side. How big does it look on your side there, Ike? About eight inches into the handrail. Um, so it looks it, it looks secure. It's, I'm going towards the charge. That's going facing forward about yep. inches. I agree. That's good. I agree. Your side is wire tied. That's good. Roger. All right. Looks like a good tie down. Roger. Ready. Ready to head back? I am ready. I'm good. All right, when you guys are happy, you can head back to the airlock, um, follow your safety tethers back, and I can remember to pick up your green hook from lab 285. You want? I'll follow you from here, though. Okay, copy. More. Now that looks like the picture. That's a nice job on that bag. That came out all right, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Must be the same person who did the uh, wire ties on Bartolomeo Papas. I don't know that person because that was... It is a little hard. I think this is where we park company. So, see you back at the airlock. Roger, I'm going to see each other's car around or something. Crew members have wrapped up their tasks for the day, and the sun rises on the International Space Station as it orbits 260 statute miles over the North Pacific Ocean. Got a small glimpse from a helmet camera of the solar arrays. The next major upgrades for the International Space Station will be installation of new solar arrays arriving later this year. These are known as IROSA, standing for Rollout Solar Arrays. This technology is not only being used on the space station, but also for the power and propulsion element for NASA's Gateway Lunar Outpost. The main difference between those two solar arrays is that these on the space station will be installed and deployed manually through spacewalks, but those on Gateway for the power and propulsion element will be deployed autonomously after launch. So while you guys are translating back, uh, I'll just give you an update on the ammonia situation. Uh, you've now had three full bakeouts, and combined with the fact that uh, you didn't see any contamination on your suits and that the uh, propulsive stream wasn't directed 
at you directly, then uh, our recommendation is that we do not do an ammonia measurement test inside the airlock. Uh, but of course, uh, we want your opinion of it. Your opinion of it. I think we're okay. I'm comfortable with that too. Yeah, Andy, we like it. Excellent. Then we'll uh, forego the ammonia measurement test. All right, EV2 is at the airlock. All right, EV1 is at my green hook. You can see from the high-definition camera on his spacesuit, Mike Hopkins has arrived back at the Quest airlock. As Victor Glover makes his way there as well, just a quick recap of what our astronauts accomplished today. It's now been six hours and 25 minutes since the start of the spacewalk. That began at 7.14 a.m. Central, 8.14 a.m. Eastern. The crew members vented two jumpers on the early ammonia system and relocated one jumper cable to the outside of the Quest airlock. Copy that. Victor Glover removed and replaced a wireless video system external transceiver assembly, which recently received a successful checkout. Hopper, if you want to get your waist tether connected to the airlock D-ring extender, you can go ahead and do that. It works. Mike Hopkins successfully connected three jumpers on the Bartolomeo platform. That task had recently given astronauts some trouble on a spacewalk earlier this year. He also capped one of those jumpers, leaving five out of six connectors mated and Bartolomeo in a mostly operational state. European Space Agency teams will evaluate a future course of action. And the small hook is also good. Copy that. And I think I heard you say that uh, you're going to retrieve that uh, Columbus crew lock bag that's outside Tempstone. It's in work. Power checkouts were reported to be successful on the jumpers connected on the Bartolomeo platform today. Victor Glover installed a thermal cover stiffener to keep the thermal cover from blowing open. On the forward gearing, I think I am right. Forward you are on the forward. Okay. We do kind of have a crow. It's just going to hang out here. Yeah. Okay. I've got the red mitt from inside. APFR is kind of serving as a fair lead for me, so you see the, my cable? Yeah, I do. Okay. See, okay. Nick, would it be better if I undo that? Uh, I'm, I'm about ready to go in. Okay. I'm going to do one last look. All right. Okay. Yeah. Other tasks completed today include Mike Hopkins reconfiguring the ham radio. All right, let's go in. Gotcha. And both astronauts worked to route cam report cables. The CP9 cable was routed to its intended destination for the day, and CP8 was partially routed. Yep, I did, and it's there. Okay, so uh, once you're uh, satisfied that you're connected to the airlock D-ring extender, I think you already checked that, then you can give Ike a go to release your anchor hook. Ike, you have a go. Release the anchor hook. And Ike, you can, take, you can take Hopper's anchor hook and put it on your waist tether, and then check gate closed hook lock. Uh, 
top of your anchor is off of the aft steering ladder. Black on black, gate closed to my waist tether, which is also locked. Black on black, gate closed. Roger. Welcome out to you now. Roger. I've also got this real bag. Okay. Another, uh, actually, you know what, it's got all red on it. Pop up and put that in. Roger. Both astronauts are back at the airlock, but the spacewalk itself and its clock will not be complete until repressurization of the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock begins. Okay. The real bag is on the uh, earth fin rail. Roger that. Still walking, get my SCU live. Okay. Got it. Then Ike, you can retrieve your own anchor hook and stow it on your mini workstation. Stow it on your mini workstation. Okay, I've got to get safety tether chain through my waist tether. Still locked. Lock on black. And I will grab my anchor. Okay. There we go. I am locked. Nice. I've got both anchors up. Let me pull this uh, CP8 in or CP9. You are clear. All right. Keep my BRT situated, and I'll be in shortly. Gotcha. All right. Here it comes. I can question question. Up with you something. You see anything right here? Uh, not seeing. Under my cliffs or my feet. Okay, well, whatever it is, it's gone. That's much better. Can I say anything? Andy, what did you think? Uh, so we'll just want uh, want you to verify that the pit pin is in place, the same one as before. It's the uh, the aft pit pin on the forward hinge. And then also uh, something new. Okay, uh, same sure. And now there should be a, a hook pit that you. Looks like it did when we egress. No, no, don't. You don't need to egress to to verify. I, uh, Andy, the pin looks like it did when we egress. No change. Copy that. Uh, so you can now close the uh, the hook and uh, cinch the strap until it's uh, fairly snug, and then let us know how many sharpie lines are visible. I snugged it, and it essentially would take up all the slack. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, which is, I think, all of them that you could, which slack is you could take up. Yeah, we copy and we see that in your WVS. 
So you can uh, remove the SCU from the pouch and connect it to your DCM. And uh, uh, Ike, before you do that, can you check that the Velcro, the, the strap is not blocking access to the magnetic plate? Uh, the strap is not. The strap is what the feather is connected to. You talking about this other, this piece of Velcro? It's not. It's not flush. Magnetic plate is a little bit just gone from the other. Yeah, we see that. WBS, yeah, yeah, we, we have a good good view, and we see that that Velcro is now out of, is not uh, interfering. Okay. All right. If you could uh, go a little more, whatever side you're on, is that station forward? It is. Go a little bit more that way. Right here. And then toward the hatch, so I can move my plus up. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm going to put my SC in work. Okay. Okay. That made a lot of room, whatever you did. I kind of rotated a little bit. Hold forward. And Hopper, is your uh, SCU connected and locked? Connected and locked. Copy. And Hopper, this time you can turn your HECA off OFF. Roger. Thanks for the reminder. Heck, it is off. Both astronauts are now in the airlock with the thermal cover closed. This view from NASA astronaut Victor Glover's helmet camera. And this one coming from the other side of the Quest airlock. This is from a camera inside the equipment lock portion where the astronaut suited up earlier this morning. SCU cooling. So now at this point you can switch your water to off, OFF, and expect an H2O is off message. One water off. Give it two. Copy, and we need to wait two minutes before we close the hatch. And I got an O2 use I, 2.6. Copy. Copy. That's the only message. That's the only message. I guess we're doing as much as we can do anyway here on SCU. Raj. So Hopper, you're on SCU, so we don't see uh, an immediate problem with the O2U's high message. Uh, your suit pressure also looks good. We'll wait for one more data pass just to confirm. Roger. Getting in your way, Hopper. Nope. Just trying to get in position to hit the button.
the astronauts work is done for the day however the spacewalk is not over until repressurization begins due to a backfill of the tank so we're going to go and go ahead and press with a uh, nominal ingress and nominal repress so at this point, uh, water's been off for more than two minutes, so Ike, you can go ahead and verify that the outer hatch is clear of hardware, verify the handle position per the hatch decal, and then go ahead and close and lock the hatch. Okay. Um, most of the things are on the way of the hatch. Can you, can you pull the safety covers for you? Yep, sure can. Stand by. There's a large, small, it's perfectly in the wrong spot. That large, small that's hanging out? Don't see it. Which side? It's right on the center of the handrail. Okay. Right on safety feathers. Great. And if I can get that large, small. Oh, that's the uh, one to the, the, the CPA bag. How's that? Maybe. Better. Roger. Okay, now I'm going to come back toward you. Roger. Am I bumping up against you, or is that the weather? Uh, it's the weather. Oh, now. Clockwise. Okay, I think that is all the way. Not this lock tab would get all the way flush. Not, huh? No. And either the handle is all the way. Hard stop. Oh, there we go. It is flush. Okay. All right. Handle is or the hatch is latched and locked. Excellent. Uh, if you could just report the gauge rally to us, please. Uh, maybe zero point one. It's just on the right edge, the left edge of the zero. All right. We copy. So we'll move on to the. Uh Depress, repress, cue card. So on your DCM, just uh, double check that the SCU is connected to the DCM. You want two. And uh, I can confirm your water has been off for two minutes. So uh, on the crew lock, check that the EV hatch is closed and locked. You want. On the UIA, check that the uh, oxygen valves, two of them, to EMU 1 and 2, are open. Open EV1, or EMU 1, open EMU 2. Next, switch power to EV1 and 2 to on. Power EV1, 
On with the green light. Power EV2. On with the green light. Excellent. Check that the uh, EV1 and 2 volts are 18 to 19. 18.6 EV1, 18.6 EV2. Finally, on your DCM, switch power to SCU and expect a warning tone. Power SCU. Power SCU. Copy. It's been a pleasure working with you again. Uh, I'll hand you over at this point to uh, Suichi and Kate in the airlock. Sandy, thank us uh, to the upgrade 3.5 team. Those were good days. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, we agree. Great job outside. We appreciate all your hard work. Sandy. Yeah, thanks, Andy. And uh, from here, Suit IV will take over on the crew of Grip Press. EV1, EV2, O2 actuator to press. And that can work. With both astronauts in the airlock and the hatch closed, we will be looking for repressurization to begin and mark the official end of today's spacewalk. This view of the equipment lot portion of the Quest airlock where Soichi Noguchi and Kate Rubens await the astronauts to help them doff their spacesuits. EV2, press. And copy EV1 and EV2 both uh, press. That's affirmative, EV2 is press. All right. And the And check the uh, EB1, check EB hatch MPEP is closed. That's closed. Okay, EB1, EB2, we're going to start uh, repressing IB hatch uh, equalization valve. I'll, I'll go start from the very small rate and see how it goes. EB, how is EB1, EB2 copy? EB1, true. Copy. Started repress at 0802 p.m. Eight o'clock. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's late. Yeah. yeah just to let you know, we are all awake waiting for you guys. <laughs> EB1 is good. EB2 is good. Okay, I'm going to slowly pick up the press rate. Two, one, two. With a spacewalk that began this morning at 7.14 a.m. Central Time, we have just seen repressurization begin at 2.01 p.m. Central Time bringing us to a total of six hours and 47 minutes for today's spacewalk. A wave to the camera from Soichi Noguchi. We will remain on air until the astronauts are back inside the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock and have doffed their helmets. While we wait, another recap of what the astronauts accomplished today. We saw them work together to vent two jumpers on the early ammonia system and relocate one of those to the outside of the airlock. Victor Glover removed and replaced a wireless video system external transceiver assembly, or a WETA. That was recently reported to have a successful checkout. Mike Hopkins connected jumpers on the Bartolomeo platform and capped one. Connected three jumpers. That means five out of the six connectors are now mated and leaves Bartolomeo in a mostly operational state. And uh, when the two at 5.0 on the EB2, I will close the equalization valve. Copy. The power checkouts on those cables connected today were good, and the European Space Agency teams will evaluate future course of action. 
Victor Glover installed a thermal cover stiffener to keep the thermal cover from blowing open. And Mike Hopkins reconfigured the ham radio also near Columbus. The astronauts then routed the CP9 cable and partially routed CP8, bringing us to a total of six hours and 47 minutes for today's spacewalk. There's 4.0, with the tone. One up. You want copy? Copy. Now it's uh, equalization bar is off, and uh, we're going to take uh, two minutes to satellite, so sometime. NEB1, NEB2, this is the uh, best time to accept the dinner order. Yes, hot. Yep. <laughs> sure, you make it up. The Twinkies. Twinkies, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kate just gave me all the options. So good, I'm going to stop walking and go to the dinner <laughs> Not quite yet. Wait a minute. Getting a little bit of that same irritation this time in my left eye. Getting right now? Right now, yeah. Much more mild though. It's just noticeable. Copy the arc. My right eye is fine. I haven't done or changed anything in the last several minutes. Houston Station, Session 1, P1 is 244, Decimal 85. Okay, we copy. Good numbers.
with the completion of today's spacewalk at 2.01 p.m. Central Time. We've got some updated statistics for you based on spacewalks at the station. Today's lasted six hours and 47 minutes and was the 237th spacewalk in support of station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. It was the fifth spacewalk conducted in 2021, but the sixth for Expedition 64, with one of those originating from the Poisk airlock and five from the Quest airlock. This was the fourth spacewalk for Victor Glover, totaling 26 hours and seven minutes. The fifth for Mike Hopkins, totaling 32 hours and one minute. Today's spacewalk itself, as we mentioned, six hours and 47 minutes. And of all time, that brings total spacewalks for space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades to a total of 62 days, three hours, and 54 minutes. And I uh, assume there's no car for this year, so I'm going to continue. EB1, uh, EB1 and EB2 both uh, also actuated to IV. I will start the equalization again, and again, it's starting slow, and I pick up the race, uh, weight as you are comfortable. One, two. Start of repress. While repressurization continues in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, we've got a couple more Ask NASA questions that we can answer. This one asking, are the suits one size fits all or are there different sizes? Engineers on the ground take about 80 measurements to ensure each spacewalker has the best fitting spacesuit, and there are about 16 major elements that compose the suit. That's about three different sizes of torsos, eight sizes of elbow joint pieces, two adjustable waist sizes, five sizes of knee joint pieces, and 65 sizes of gloves or custom fitted gloves. The next question comes from Kylie, who wants to know how long these astronauts have been on the station and how long they will stay. The astronauts currently living on the space station arrived on two separate vehicles. The first of those was NASA astronaut Kate Rubens and Roscosmos cosmonauts Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Sverchkov. They arrived at the International Space Station on October 14th after launching on a Soyuz rocket. They will remain aboard the International Space Station until next month. Meanwhile, the other four crew members, five crew, four crew members, arrived on the SpaceX Crew-1 mission. They arrived on November 17th and will stay on board until the arrival of the Crew-2 mission.
We copy and concur, and we'll stand by for your report when you open the ivy hatch. And Houston Station um, 1, uh, it's it's now quiet and looks like the uh, pressure is equalized. If you guys are okay, we're going to start uh, opening the hatch and understand we're blocked 41. Sweetie, we are go for you to open the IV hatch. With the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock repressurized, Suichi Noguchi and Kate Rubens prepared to open the hatch, separating them from Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover. Station on safety ground one and crew members, we have no detectable ammonia by uh, smell. That is good news, Kate. That puts us on the nominal post EVA and we'll restow the equipment you got out earlier later on. Okay, copy all. Thanks. As a reminder, one of the astronauts' tasks today, specifically their first task, was to vent ammonia from the early ammonia system. Confirmation from Kate Rubens that there does not appear to be any ammonia residue on either of the crew members. Oh, let's see. Is my waist tether still might be attached? And airlock Houston on one, just letting you know 
EV crew is no longer hot mic on Space to Ground 1. And then for uh, Kate and Suichi, we just want to make sure that you open the 1.240 post-EVA procedure from Optimus because it's an XTP version and not from the link in the ammonia decontamination procedure. TP version. Mike Hopkins now back in the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock. Both, uh, both EVs are not hot mic. Good copy. Kate Rubens and Suichi Noguchi are removing the safer backpack. And Houston Station, the one we're picking up the post uh, EVA, and uh, we're stopping step seven for the safer dropping. Suichi, we copy. The safer is the simplified aid for EVA rescue, and it's a compressed nitrogen powered backpack. Obviously, we didn't see those in use today. They are reserved for use in case a crew member were to become detached from the space station and needed to maneuver back. Another look at today's spacewalk by the numbers. This was the 237th spacewalk in support of station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades, and the fifth spacewalk of this year. It was the sixth spacewalk for Expedition 64, one of those being conducted out of the Poisk module, and the other five out of the Quest airlock, which we saw today. 
This was the fourth spacewalk for Victor Glover and now has a total of spacewalking time of 26 hours and 7 minutes. Mike Hopkins completed his fifth spacewalk today, totaling out at 32 hours and 1 minute. Today's spacewalk lasted 6 hours and 47 minutes, starting at 7.14 a.m. Central Time and ending at 2.01 p.m. Central Time. And in total of those 237 spacewalks in support of station assembly maintenance and upgrades, you see 62 days, 3 hours, and 54 minutes of total spacewalking time. The four astronauts in frame were leading today's spacewalk on orbit, Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover being our spacewalkers, and Soichi Noguchi and Kate Rubens serving to help them get suited and unsuited. The team here on the ground consisting of Flight Director Chris Edelin, Lead Spacewalk Officer Art Thomason, and Ground IV, who was relaying the tasks to the astronauts, Andy Mogensen an ESA, or European Space Agency astronaut. And Capcom Kathy Bolt spoke with the astronauts inside the International Space Station. Both Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover back inside the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock where they were this morning preparing for today's spacewalk.
As we await for the astronauts' helmets to be removed, a recap of today's spacewalk and everything our crew members accomplished. The spacewalk began at 7.14 a.m. Central Time, and the first task for our crew members was to vent two kit jumpers on the early ammonia system. Victor Glover relocated one of those jumper cables to the outside of the Quest airlock, then removed and replaced a wireless video system external transceiver assembly. We've received confirmation that there was a successful checkout of that hardware. Mike Hopkins successfully connected three jumpers on the Bartolomeo platform, continuing work that was started earlier this year. He also capped one jumper, meaning five out of the six connectors are now mated and Bartolomeo is in a mostly operational state. European Space Agency teams reported that power checkouts were good and they will continue evaluating a future course of action for the platform. Victor Glover installed a new thermal cover stiffener, preventing the thermal cover on the Quest airlock from blowing open. And Mike Hawkins reconfigured the ham radio near the Columbus module. The astronauts finished out the day by routing the CP9, that's camera port 9 cable, and partially routing the CP8 cable. Once connected, these will provide a Wi-Fi hotspot for the International Space Station. Today's spacewalk ended at 2.01 p.m. Central Time for a total spacewalk time of 6 hours and 47 minutes. Astronauts Victor Glover and Mike Hopkins getting a chance to flex their hands 
after a taxing EVA, of course, all work on a spacewalk is performed by the astronauts' hands. And so at the end of the day, working with those heavy pressurized gloves, it feels good to take those off and uh, get to flex your hands. And with helmets off of Victor Glover and Mike Hopkins, that wraps up our coverage for today's spacewalk, totaling at six hours and 47 minutes. Coming up next for space station events, we will have Mark Vandehei participating in a live news conference Monday, March 15th at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Vandehei will be flying as part of Expedition 65 to the International Space Station. Good attitudes and a successful day of work completed by our two astronauts, Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover. And with that, we are signing off. This is Mission Control Houston.